to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And I tell you the truth, what it will work in the lives of people will surprise them. I promised that I was going to take a few testimonies and I wasn't able to come as at the time but I understand that there are a few very striking testimonies please let me have the, the details just okay go ahead hallelujah um, this is Usman Augusta okay Jennifer, Jennifer John Oleku where is that I hope they can hear outside please if it's your name or just guide them very quickly so they can Samael Achindo, Grace Heman, you can put your hands together for them as they come. Gloria Jaja and um, Fatima Abubaka Besson. Okay, the following. Would you repeat it, please, one more time? Usman Augusta, Jennifer John, Oleku, Esther, Samael Achindo, Grace Heman, Gloria Jaja, and Fatima Abubaka Besson. Are they here? Wherever you are, please, very quickly, make your way to the front. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 while we wait for them I hope they are around Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 this is Jesus speaking to the disciples now and he said but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you it says and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in samaria and to the utmost part of the earth very very interesting it says you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come and he never said that power will make you a preacher he never said that power will make you a prophet he never said that power will make you an apostle he said that power that you receive will make you a witness a witness listen very carefully i'm teaching now are we together now a witness is not a prophet a witness is not an apostle a witness is not even a man of god a witness is an individual who has been authorized to prove that jesus did not lie are we together when it talks of witness that's all right if, if they are not around or they are not within the vicinity that's okay we can continue with what we are doing a witness is one whose assignment is to prove the validity of a statement is a defender are we together now it's a legal terminology like you go to the the court of law and you are asked do you have a witness at the point where whatever action was taken was there an individual who can attest for you now remember we were not there when jesus died but the bible says there is something that the holy ghost can bring to our lives are we together now and it says that anointing that power can make us witnesses validators validators of the claims of jesus listen without a system for validating the claims of jesus there is no reason to be a christian are we together now yes it matters that the claims of Jesus be validated in the life of the saints and in the territories where they are domiciled. It matters that men know that this Jesus that we seek and this Jesus that we serve, listen carefully, is not just a mirage, he's not a doctrine, he's not just theology, that he's alive and lives forevermore. And there is the power that makes us validators. Are we together now? It says we shall receive the power. I hope that you people are not coming out of any pressure. Please make sure you are not. Are we together now? If we just have two of them, that's okay. 
they can just it's just a token um of the testimony so that i can fulfill whatever it is can we pause for a moment and and, and then let's hear their testimony come my dear just tell us quickly i don't have your name here praise the lord my name is jennifer john oleku for four to five years now i have a lump in my right breast but after the prayer last night, this morning I was dressing and then I checked myself. It was gone to the glory of God. Completely. The lump. How long? Four to five years. Four to five years. You checked this morning. Yes, sir. And it's gone completely. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. We do not take for granted. You know, you people are so used to miracles in this place. When something happens, you just laugh and um, never get familiar with the presence of God. It says that, um, how did he put it now? I, I'm trying to remember a scripture that the Bible put. Um, Philemon chapter 1 verse 6. I can't remember the, the, the quotation, but I remember the verse. Philemon 1 verse 6. Give it to us. There's no point struggling when we can read it. Philemon 1 verse 6. Can we have it? Okay, I'll just turn there. I just wanted to encourage us with that scripture. One moment, my dear, and I'll pray for you. Philemon chapter 1. And verse 6. That the communication of your faith might be effectual by the what? Acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. So the communication of your faith is effectual. When you take note of the slightest thing God does. Lord, I had headache yesterday. And all of a sudden, it's not there now. The Bible says it can boost your faith. The communication of your faith is made effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing. There was a lump on my breast. And now I've checked and it's not there. While I'm trusting God to give another miracle, I do not ignore what he has done. Are we together now? In the name of Jesus, may the Lord perfect you never never returns again in jesus name come my dear let's give jesus praise for her go ahead your name and your testimony praise god my name is gloria faga yesterday you prayed about those i can't hear with your right ear after the prayer i was able to hear couldn't hear with your right ear you're sure how long 20 years now um how old are you now do you mind Hallelujah. Interesting. And, and for that long, for 20 years, what happened? Just that pain in me. And, and that was it. And right now you can hear with it. Which of them? It will never return to you again. In the name of Jesus. The same way the Lord opened your ears, may every part of your destiny be opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord praise the lord thank you thank you so much so we we're discussing acts chapter 1 and verse 8 now while jesus was on earth please follow me carefully while jesus was on earth the bible lets us know that he lived an invincible life he lived a life of power he lived a life of intelligence he lived a life of grace he lived a life that was full of the spirit and when you begin to read john 15 john 16 jesus began to tell us please listen that he was going to introduce us to another comforter another helper now most believers read this and they just think that okay he was just talking to pentecostals please listen you have to understand this for what we are doing tonight to make sense are we together those outside are we together and so jesus said to them i have many things to tell you now but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he says he will guide you notice now jesus is teaching he will guide you into all truth he will take of the things that are mine and reveal to you the bible said it's the holy spirit that convicts the world do you know one of the things that i've learned about the miraculous is that miracles on their own never never change people are we together 
the disciples saw every kind of miracle in the ministry of jesus and even when he resurrected the bible says some doubted they saw the sick healed they saw the dead raised they saw whatever would happen happen but they had the effrontery to doubt jesus the scribes and the pharisees they were represented at every crusade yet with what they saw they still doubted jesus without the presence of the holy spirit there is no genuine conviction that's why you can see people clap over fantastic miracles carry the testimonies around town and never change themselves they are celebrators of the finger of god but they are never benefactors of that grace so jesus began to teach us that the holy spirit has a ministry to believers he has a ministry to unbelievers and jesus said that he will reprove the world the fallen system of men of sin of righteousness of judgment and then to the believers he will guide them in all truth he will do this and that the bible began to tell us all the things that jesus would do now let me tell you this one of the things that i have discovered is that most believers cannot separate between the present day ministry of christ and his ministry while he walked on earth are we together now and so most people still wait on jesus to do what he has left the holy spirit to do for us you have to listen to what i'm teaching you now are we together now jesus said it is expedient advantageous for you that i go why so that the comforter the helper the same word that is used for a woman in the life of a man the helper will come the helper will come that means jesus was saying come jesus was saying he that told i represent the presence and the ministry of the holy spirit to you but shortly i'm going to go away but i will not leave you comfortless is that true someone else will come to hold your hands and continue is the greek word alos paracletos the word alos means of the same kind heteros where we get heterogeneous means of another kind another species so another person is coming and he is no different from who i am in terms of ability in terms of purpose in terms of function it says when he comes he will continue my ministry everybody say continue my ministry so the holy spirit today represents to the body of christ what jesus represented to the apostles are we together most people jesus help me jesus save me i know that it looks emotional but jesus has no business helping you and saving you today he has already done that he's seated at the right hand of the father making intercession for the saints that's the limit of his ministry now the personality he has sent on earth to represent his voice his plan is the holy spirit are we together now yes you pray to the father agreed you pray in the name of Jesus, but the personality sent on earth to walk with the believer, to cause the believer's life to be an unfolding of beauty and glory is the Holy Spirit. Never claim you love Jesus and ignore the Holy Spirit. That's hypocrisy. There are so many people who love God sincerely, but the unbecoming of their lives and destinies and families it can be traceable to their ignoring the holy spirit it's not that they don't believe in him they know he's somewhere one of the godhead somewhere and he's on earth if you are interested if you want power go to him and since i'm not a preacher i know he's just there if that is your understanding about the holy spirit you will never become victorious weak people feeble people but the holy spirit came upon their lives and turned their lives into signs turned their lives into wonders they shook their generation the bible says time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak look at these ordinary women and in our generation we talk of women like catherine kuhlman people like william um, um, um what's his name seymour and all of these great ordinary people born like any other entity but when they encounter this personality and they dare to trust him look what he did with their lives the holy spirit can change anybody's life my life is a testimony don't trivialize the holy spirit he will make a wonder out of your life if you're with me say amen, amen. we have ignored the ministry of the holy spirit 
pastors have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I wonder what a pastor will be doing ignoring the ministry of the Holy Spirit. There's no ministry without him. What are you teaching? That's the reason why we have too much talk with no demonstration of the validity. When I talk of demonstration, I don't mean falling down and rolling. No, I'm talking about the life producing power. It says, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but the demonstration of power that your faith will not be on the wisdom of men, Sophia, but on the power of God. We have a generation full of theologians and theoretical people and we men of God keep proposing. Do you know what, how dangerous it is to keep wetting the appetite of people about what God can do and then they never come into that experience. There is a difference between the waiting of faith and hopelessness. The waiting of faith is that you are sure you have engaged what will bring an expected end. And you are simply allowing the law of process to find expression. Are we together? The Holy Spirit takes ordinary people and turns them into wonders. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. Please let me burn this into your spirit in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is not for men of God. The Holy Spirit is for all believers. He is a real person. He can be known. He can be related with. It's just that we have not been taught. We've not been taught the usefulness of his person. The Holy Spirit today represents the unlimited presence of Jesus. He represents the power of God. He's the manifestation of the glory of God. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. He turned Jesus to a seed and put him in the womb of a woman. What can he not turn? In Genesis chapter 1, when you read, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then when you read verse 2, the Bible says, Now the earth was dark and formless and all of that, just like the lives of several people. Dark, void, formless, scattered, family scattered into pieces. And the Bible says, He's the creative force that began to hover around. And then God spoke, Let there be. And there was. And he said it was good. Remember, the goodness of God cannot be seen outside of the Holy Spirit. The only reason why it became good was because of the Holy Spirit. I look at my life today and I imagine what a failure I would have become without him. It's not about oratory. No, it's his presence. We are all gathered today, scattered around and people following, connected from all over the world today from this location because of the holy spirit when you believe him in your life sister he will turn you into a wonder i'm telling you this when you believe him in your life this is not the issue of being a christian this is an issue of saying holy spirit you were sent by jesus to be an extension of his ministry everywhere you see the name jesus in the experience of the disciples you can safely replace it with holy spirit aside from salvation the work of salvation on the cross when there was no wine they ran to jesus so when there is no beauty and freshness in your life you run spirit of the living god you represent jesus for me jesus is not physically here in cana but i come to you and he says i you are correct i can bless you when jesus was moving and he saw certain people idle he said why sittest thou idle they said no man employ us he said go and a job came so you go to the Holy Spirit and say, Spirit of the living God, this joblessness, you represent Jesus to me. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. When the tribute, remember Jimmy's powerful teaching, when the tax collectors and the wicked system of this world came to embarrass the sons of life, it was Jesus that instructed Peter, go to the fish. And now you run to the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, my finances. There are bills to pay. I don't know what to do. I come to you. An extension of the ministry of Jesus. Are we together? Yes. Everything, literally, that Jesus was to the disciples, to the then civilization of man, is who the Holy Spirit is to us today. It's who the Holy Spirit is to us today. Jesus sent the disciples and told them to go two by two. 
and they returned in power they said master even the devils were subject to us through thy name and he said do not rejoice because demons are subject to us in your name rejoice because your name is written in the book of life this is jesus speaking so now when you need empowerment to go and represent jesus because he is not there physically you go to the holy spirit you have to be the one to send me to that meeting i'm going for that crusade there are blind eyes there are deaf ears there are all kinds of people the power of the holy spirit we're going to talk about power shortly but i'm introducing the person of the holy spirit it has been my cry for years that there be a generation that not only seek god as a hypothetical reality but that you can come to the holy spirit facebook has taught us that you can relate with someone without seeing his face like some of you have friends you've had friends for years you've never seen their faces yet you have even been connected to their emotional impulses you know when they are angry you know where they are happy yet everything was through chatting it is possible to know a man without seeing his face hmm. how could you do ministry without the holy spirit what are you preaching sister how could you dare get married without the holy spirit what do you want to do with that marriage? Give birth when there is a wicked devil that wants to close your womb. Brother White, you want to get married without him? Don't you know that marriage is a triangle? He is the first person and then you and the wife are under. You go two of you like a string, you are in trouble. When two of you are apart, it is him that brings you back. The Holy Spirit. People do business without him. We carry our pride all around believing that we are educated and we ignore him. And we watch our wisdom fail in the presence of circumstances. How many preachers just come out with our accolades and we believe I have experience. I've been in the ministry for 30 years and it's very clear there's no result in our lives. Listen, I'm reintroducing the person of the Holy Spirit. You may have experienced his anointing but do you know him? Do you know him? He's the secret behind this ministry you see. This young man standing before you is dangerously in love with him. He is the secret behind this life that you so see and admire. For he truly brings beauty out of your life. 32 verse 15 Isaiah. Until the spirit be poured upon Joshua Selman from on high. And then this life that is an utter wilderness. Now becomes counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. He truly brings beauty and glory. I'm not asking you whether you are educated. I'm not asking you whether you can speak English. I'm not asking you whether your father is in politics. I'm asking you do you know him? He's brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. Lord, you are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. You are brooding over all my darkness you are causing lights to shine from dark you see li listen listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something we live in a society where nobody believes in you don't sit down getting angry that they don't believe in me they deserve to not believe in you but you ignore them and walk with the holy spirit give him time and watch the wonder he will produce he met a young virgin called mary and said mary the angel came on his behalf just believe and watch what will happen that you can be pregnant without a man that it is possible that because you did not have the privilege to have a godfather somewhere can anything good come out of nazareth and the holy spirit says hold my hand and he said lord i can't even talk like moses don't worry hold my hands and he turns you into a sign and a wonder and people say is this not the lady we used to know beauty and glory that you in a little one room somewhere you are still struggling to raise seven thousand and pay but you bring the holy spirit i don't have a big house but i invite you into my room i tell you his presence will squeeze you out of that room and take you where it looks like him 
That's the Holy Spirit for you. He's the lifter of men. This thing is not magic. It's not just prophecy. I'm telling you this. Listen to what I'm telling you. If you are a man of God here or you are called into ministry or you have the call of God upon your life, listen twice. Close down any ministry when you don't know his presence because you are on the way to utter frustration. I know this about him. He's brooding over all my darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. Lord, you are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness. I remember in 2004, standing and witnessing crowds like this in Reinhard Bonke's crusade. I saw what the Holy Spirit could do with a young German, not so educated, not so fluent. He didn't have, even have a lot of rema. He didn't have it. My God, but I saw a presence. I saw miracles. I saw transformation. I saw people who should not be in that crusade ground. You will know he brought them there. And I said, this is what I want. How could I do ministry and be lying to people and begging people? I don't think I'm as smart as people require for ministry i don't think i'm as intelligent as people require for ministry so i ran to him cover my shame cover my shame i may not have the opportunity to have been born by a billionaire i didn't have the privilege that society demands but cover my shame lord i admit that i'm weak and the holy spirit said hold my hand let's go let me tell you, it was a vision. This is where this ministry was birthed. By Sunday, Koinonia will be seven, uh, seven anniversary of Koinonia. But let me tell you this. I remember I was standing in that vision. I was standing and I saw a whole generation of people. They were crying. It was fear that took me there to that building. And I stood, I was watching. I could not see the end of the people. And I said, what is this? And then some of them were murmuring and they were saying there's no food and there's no water and then i said who is the cause and all of them were pointing to me and said, you are the reason why we do not have food and water and i said kai i have to go out and rescue this generation but i was afraid because there were wicked men outside waiting for me all of a sudden i took a bold step as soon as i opened the door I saw a giant man waiting and he said hold my hands let's go and that's how we started jumping building after building i remember one time i he jumped a building and was waiting and smiling waiting for me to come and i said if the secret is holding your hands then may my hand remain with you forever when that was happening you were not there but you were in the loins of prophecy please i i i don't know how to beg you don't ignore what the holy spirit can do in your life this power and these miracles you see is not just chasing around and saying lay hands on me god is not a fool walk with him and watch him surprise you walk with him i remember those nights when i'll just find a corner and just be praying individually you know when i see young ministers now and this our appetite to be known appetite to be seen i just nod my head and i say these gentlemen have missed it little power they want to be recognized everywhere they want to be known invite me for meeting call me apostle don't call me brother it's nonsense when his power smells you even to the father's part they said they shall call you you won't call yourself they shall call you ministers of our god there will be an evidence of his hand upon your life i remember the first notable miracle that happened of a gentleman then phones just came out and they were making calls somebody whose spine was fractured remember that miracle the guy's spine was broken into pieces completely and all of a sudden it was with that call it was in the night i was going to browse and then pray and all of a sudden i called that gentleman with a bracelet confirmed here and i think then it was um the other place there and all of a sudden with just one single prayer brothers and sisters that gentleman removed that thing and ran to his mother the only thing i had was jesus the next day the way you gather for funeral that's how they gathered in that house the father had the boy was healed 
they said who did this they said it's one brother joshua not apostle all these showmanship people move around today they don't pray they don't fast no mentorship they don't listen to anybody they just brag around saying i saw a vision i had a dream i saw a ministry sit down and walk with him don't ignore him and look for fame you would die young you are brooding over every darkness you are causing lights to shine from dark you are brooding over my darkness you are causing lights to shine from I will never forget one day when I, I spoke to the Holy Spirit about my financial issues and he said forget about that a time will come when God visits you he visits you completely there are times he says forget just you are walking with, leave the issue of finances let me work on you otherwise the finance thing would kill you there are people where you start with God there is there should not be mention of power in your dealings with God you will see God flogging an aspect. You can come to church, we teach about something else. When you are done, the Holy Spirit will say, save that book. We'll talk about it next year. Let's go back to what we are discussing. And you will see him talking about something that has no business with the subject matter. Allow him to work on you. Jesus. Jesus. When he's done with you, and he brings beauty and glory out of your life, you will look at yourself, and you will be afraid. You say, Lord, is this what you planned? Look at a poor village girl like me. Look at a poor village boy like me. And he says, that's exactly what I want to do. To show that there is this treasure in earthen vessels. To show that I can take the weak things. Oh God, I'm a poor girl from Kaduna State somewhere. Lord, I'm an illiterate somewhere in the south. He says, don't worry. Hold my hands. Don't al allow the proud system of the world that think they are the alpha and the omega of growth and rising walk with me do you know we have ignored the holy spirit so much where you talk about him like this people just look at it from the lens of intellectualism i'm not against that and they just look wow impressive sermon he's brooding over all your darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness you are brooding over every cause you are causing, you are causing light, light to shine from God. There are people who were looking for money when we were seeking his presence. Till today they have not found it. Till today they would never focus on him because of money. There are people who could not settle down. They were so obsessed about ministry and briefcases and PA and men and women following their ministry regalia and would not settle down to seek his presence. Till today, till tomorrow, they are still suffering. Some of them are not even in the faith again. Please hear me, Koinonia. Let's settle down with the Holy Spirit. Let not just because you are a leader, not just because you are a worker, settle down with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I'm not in a rush with you. Do with me whatever Jesus would have done with me and you watch what you will become. The Holy Spirit will turn your life around, turn your wilderness. You will look at yourself one day and say, is this me? Lord, what is this that you have done? When Gentiles begin to come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising do you know because of the way the lord began to lift me and because of the way the lord began to lift this ministry i prayed a prayer i said lord i want to ask for a favor from you please do not show me the full impact that i'm making in the lives of people don't show me how far i have risen in the eyes of people just show me a token so that pride and self-centeredness will not destroy me let me just know i'm changing lives but don't show me how far my reach has gone and god answered that prayer it's still my prayer till tomorrow because i don't want anything to distract me let me not hear that there are 12 millionaires in america who listen to my messages every day and then you now say wow 
12 millionaires in america that means i'm becoming a big man uh -uh. so god helps you by concealing the extent of your impact you are changing lives all over but you never know how far because he wants you to continue is god speaking to us why have we lived our lives without him let me just talk on three things thank you thank you doctor very quickly before we pray three ways the holy spirit works with believers three ways number one the first ministry of the holy spirit in working with a believer is supplying divine direction divine direction guidance guidance and direction guidance and direction let me show you something that i found while i was studying exodus chapter 23 and verse 22 powerful scripture exodus chapter 23 exodus 23 23 he said but my angel shall go before thee and bring ye into all of these people and i will cut them off my angel will go before thee and bring thee this was this you see the the people of old did not have a system of working with the holy spirit corporately and so based on their understanding the lord taught them every time he would say he was sending his angel to represent his presence are we together he says my angel shall go before thee not that you go and then he follows you before thee and he shall bring you to different regions the Hamorites, the hittites the perizzites the canaanites the hivites and the jebusites and i will cut them off i'm giving you victory but that victory will be through divine direction we will go step by step guidance by guidance place by place notice how god led people in scripture he took them from one place they would conquer this land then they would go to this land many lives many lives and many destinies today have been scattered into pieces because people guess their way the bible said there is a way that seemed right unto a man a preacher a businessman a father a mother he says but the end thereof are the ways of death my angel will go before you and guide you moses said do not let we will not leave this place if your presence will not go with us he says my presence will go with you and i will give you rest notice every time his angel his presence his angel his presence and when he leads them they return with great and strange testimonies many of us are yet to explore the leadership of the holy spirit let me teach you one big secret with the leadership of the holy spirit never take a step until you are sure he's the one leading you this our world of hurry for everything i just I, I just feel that my job is in uk you go to uk and live like a thief there whereas god has destined for you that is in a quiet bomb where you are he will lift you but because he could not direct you there are many people who want to do ministry and they think it's by running to america by running to wherever or running to abuja running to different places divine direction when god directs you it was never my intention to still be in zaria at this time no as wonderful as it is if it were on my own i would prefer to be somewhere maybe in one of the cities around the world but divine direction divine direction when you read genesis chapter 26 the bible says and isaac sowed in that land i'm sure that isaac wanted to go somewhere to run for the famine and god said no 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 for others they can go but for you the secret to your prosperity is hidden in that divine direction we do not respect his leadership he says the lord is my shepherd so i shall not want i shall not want the lord is my shepherd so i shall not want there are many of our families that are in pain today because we ignore the leadership of the holy spirit very powerful isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 isaiah chapter 30 let's hurry up quickly isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21 popular scripture about the leadership of the spirit in the life 
of a believer isaiah 30 okay he says and thine ears shall hear a word behind this saying read with me everyone this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right and when ye turn to the left that god will guide you on your way going he said this path looks good but this is not for you he said lord but other believers are following it he said that's it's all right but for you this is the path wait on me sometimes he can say mark time and remain in one place lord but others are going he says don't worry you are still moving you don't move because your legs are moving you move because my word is moving you so even when you think you are standing in one place it says you are moving because when you turn you see that you have gotten there you shall hear a voice from behind you hear me people of god you shall hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way oh you have a job but let him lead you let him guide you when god leads you he defends you where he has led you the, there are many preachers today in regions that god did not send them and they are struggling as if they are not anointed there is a place prepared for you only god guides you there when he sends you to your prepared place everything follows you favor follows you his mercy follows you ease follows you difficulty can be a proof among other factors that there is something you are ignoring about the leadership of the holy spirit in this kingdom we excel through divine direction not just efforts the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil why because your rod and your staff they comfort me stop living your life without the guidance of the holy spirit you can't live your life and be guided by movies guided by all kinds of godless books guided by individual opinions guided by cultural opinions it's time to return back and say holy spirit guide me if you are not in this let me get out three days before koinonia will start this 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 aspect of the ministry's activities three days i went back for a retreat to reconfirm from god lord are you still the one or is my ambition if god ever said i'm not the one that's it it's just to apologize i'm sorry i thought i had god but he's not the one never be ashamed to retreat from whatever you are doing when you realize god is not in it sometimes is this our pride that keeps us in trouble when you find out that oh i used to think god was in this but now i'm realizing from growth that god was not we still come down and say how will people really know don't put yourself in trouble everybody say divine direction let me just give you one quick secret on how you see you must understand the voice of god this is generally speaking you must understand how god speaks i just need to give you one one direction just one scripture that i found that really blessed me john chapter 10 verse 35 the voice of god must always agree with his written word and must always agree with his character of operation remember the bible says the kingdom of god is in three things righteousness peace and joy the moment these three forces coexist the kingdom of god is within that environment and here's what the bible says it says if he called them gods unto whom the word of god came and the scripture cannot be broken your experience will not break scripture he says the word of god came to them and the scripture cannot be broken just because a word came to them the word that came to you and the word that is written must agree the word of god came to them by revelation but the scripture can still not be broken because the word of god came so the speakings of god will always be consistent with his written word and will be consistent with his character because there are times that what god is speaking about you may not find a direct scripture for it but the character of how, how god operates must be consistent are we together 
most people hear every kind of nonsense from the pit of hell and they say yes lord from the beginning of the voice to the end of it it contradicts everything god please don't let anybody threaten you with any prophetic word and anything that is not consistent with the written word of god are we together yes if you look at me now and prophesy to me and say apostle I saw you having an accident tomorrow I keep quiet and hear you if you stop there you didn't hear God because the Spirit of God will never stop there if it is it may be true that you saw an attack but then continue it to prove that it is God I saw an accident but I am speaking by the power of God's word to stop it but I saw an accident and that's it no sir no sir no sir i saw that your wife is a witch congratulations uh -huh. continue let me hear that's it that's all just leave her no sir that's not god god does not speak like that if you claim to be a man of god and your wife is a witch you are foolish you are not anointed it means you are not even a man of god because your ministry should be demonstrated day and then the validity of your anointing should be proven there let's be careful we have ignored scripture and so all kinds of words you see people just fighting one another in the name of dull visions that are not consistent with the word of god the devil uses the faces of people when god wants to lift you he will now try to use a face of a man of god or somebody you respect and come to you and press you and you get up in ignorance and say ah, you do not know that satan can masquerade as an angel of light the bible already gave you that information I must balance this issue of the voice of God because Satan has mastered the art of deceiving a generation that is not sound in scripture. We are so passionate about the prophetic, which is important, but we must balance it. Especially for we who are men of God. There is always that drive to give people word and we communicate words that are not consistent. There are things I've seen about people. I know that it's an attack from Satan but i also know by the power of the word that revealing that thing to them will not edify them it will destroy their faith so i withhold that prophecy and rather intercede for them because there is a spiritual level they must mature in for that prophetic word to benefit them god sends the word your maturity guided how it was delivered say the voice of god please let's be careful i'm not teaching you to hate the prophetic i'm not teaching you to be cynical i'm not teaching you to see a man of god making mistakes in delivering the prophetic and then getting angry at them but please let's be careful because some of us have already been swayed by the deception of satan we get up and we hate everybody we hate every man of god every woman of god because of all kinds of false visions fabricated from the pit of hell he said even if an angel brings another gospel that means satan can masquerade as an angel of light it's one of the greatest reasons why men of god should pray before coming on the stage i'm not praying when i come on stage for miracles to happen with all humility i will lay hands on a goat and it will come and stand here and the goat is blinking and you see people falling under the anointing you will think he's charm that's anointing but the accuracy of delivery is why we pray that oh god superimpose my weaknesses and my humanity so that your word will pass through all my limitations and still become spirit and life to your people that's why we pray we don't just pray for miracles and signs and wonders to happen the anointing is there to make it happen are we learning something the voice of god must never come um must never relegate the written word of god in your life the second way that the holy spirit functions in the life of a believer is by giving to us divine strategies everybody say divine strategies say it again divine strategies we win in this kingdom through mysteries but the mysteries are a revelation of a strategy go and read it when you go home joshua chapter 6 and verse 1 to i think 21 or thereabout verse 1 to 21 21 verses talks about how jericho was destroyed 
it was not just destroyed because god was powerful it was destroyed to a divine strategy nowhere in the bible was that strategy used again are we together when you stand before the challenges as a ministry i remember when this ministry was starting i went to god and i cried to him i said lord what there is a general financial strategy but what is the financial strategy for this ministry that will keep us pressure free and not allow us manipulate anybody and here it came it was revealed another ministry may try it and it may never work for them there are ministries if you sell free materials I mean, if you give free materials like your salmon and the rest, there may not be any other avenue for revenue. There are people who do that just because they want to copy and their finances go down and they suffer for nothing. You must receive a divine strategy. Lord, in this marriage, what is the strategy for training our children? In this marriage, what is the strategy for living in peace? You can get the general communication. But you must stay with God to receive a unique strategy. Lord, in this ministry, what is the strategy for ensuring efficiency? Say divine strategies. That's the Holy Spirit for you. So he leads you divine guidance and direction. Number two, he gives you ideas, strategies. When you stand before any mountain, let me give you an advice. Like the mountains that stand before you tonight. Don't be afraid. There is a strategy. God has given us the strategy for tonight. Is that true? God decided to anoint this oil and say with this oil coming on everybody, I will work wonders and strange results. It's a strategy. It's a strategy. So he gave us a strategy to fast and wait upon him for seven days and then round up with this mystery. This oil was in my room all through the night, soaking in the presence and the glory of God. It's a strategy. Are we together let me tell you one of the ways i prayed on this it was in a, in a big it wasn't like this i literally opened it and i was confessing god's word and speaking and laying hands you will think the oil cannot hear I've, I've taught you that this is a living thing this is ordinary oil but when the anointing comes the same word i'm speaking to you is the same word receiving it is just like someone speaking to you directly it's more than just oil touching your head you will see what it will do in your life hallelujah mm. jesus spoke to water and asked the people to fetch it and go and they were going and the water had what jesus said and it started changing to wine jesus jesus spoke to two fish and five loaves they had him and he commanded them to multiply and told the people go and start serving when they started everything was multiplying there were 12 baskets the third way the holy spirit ministers to the saints is by granting access to power access to the anointing just talk about this briefly and then we'll pray so we've spoken briefly about divine guidance and direction please those outside i know i know you're writing make sure you participate no matter how far just find a corner if you cannot write at least listen divine direction the lord is my shepherd the angel of the lord going before you number two strategies revealing to you mountains fall not because of the effort that is put but the strategy that is applied every military person will tell you that the difference between um being victorious or being victims in a war is the strategy that is employed and then number three access to power supernatural power acts chapter 1 verse 8 but ye, Koinonia, but ye, Joshua Selman, shall receive power. Kabbalah Kotia. Power is the word dunamis. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And it shall make you witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius in chapter 10. And in verse 38 of Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says how God, listen now, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the word born on earth from Nazareth, but still had to be anointed to be efficient. Just quoting scripture does not bring you result. The word must be anointed to profit you. 
how God anointed the word with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about the word. See, listen, the written word becomes the sent word when it is anointed. It is the anointing that turns the written word to a sent word. You want to write that down? That the written word becomes the sent word when the anointing comes upon it. How God anointed Jesus. I understand how God anointed Paul. I understand how God anointed Peter. But God anointed Jesus, the word. Until then, he was the son of the carpenter. But the anointing turned him to the Christ, a sent one. And the Bible says he went about doing good. For us to understand this, we must go to Genesis chapter 1 and see the things God say are good. He calls creation good. He calls plants coming out of a barren ground good. So there are things that are... Do you know the Bible says he went about doing good, comma, and then healing all they that were oppressed. So it's good to heal. It's, God, it's good to produce miracles, signs and wonders. But there are other needs in men's lives their finances the assault of wickedness in their lives the struggles that the devil tries to put them under the yokes of bondage the bible calls it good you do that with the anointing listen you never bless men just because you are kind it takes the anointing to do good lord just bless me so that i can help people pay their rent you see my heart your desire is not enough brothers and sisters there is an anointing that empowers you are we together now then you can prosper and do good doing good is warfare because satan will fight it lord i want to get first class so that my getting first class will give me an opportunity and then i will rise and glorify you that glorify you is what satan had every other thing is jargon he had glorify you and he says fight him in his final exams cripple him with sickness let something bring him down it takes power to subdue the wicked forces that trap down the lives of men. When members come one week, two weeks, one month, two months, they give you two months of their lives and there is nothing to change. They will not come again, let me tell you. Don't even waste your time to think they will be sympathetic. You look at them and say, ah, I didn't see you in church again. Say, Pastor, I'm busy. Say, lie. There's nobody that is busy. People are looking for solutions. If there is no solution, they will give excuse. Then one day they'll say, please don't talk to me again. I'm an adult. I can choose to come to your, your church or not. That means they are telling you I'm tired. I made up my mind that I will never be a powerless man of God. When you are a powerless man of God, you are not only bad, you are wicked. Because you will be like that fig tree that attracted men. Jesus himself fell into the temptation of that fig tree. He ran and came there and stood. Where is the fruit? And the tree said, sorry. He says, come. And Jesus cursed it in anger. And said, no fruit will come out of you again. Tonight we need power, brothers and sisters. We live in a wicked world. There are some of you here in your whole family. You are the first that will rise. It takes power to rise. There are families that when you rise, an alert is sent to the realm of the spirit. And there are controlling powers that for decades have sat upon the destinies of men. They dare not hear that you want to rise. He's going abroad and you see an uncle just coming and say, I heard that you are going to London. Say, by the grace of God, uncle. Say, congratulations. You shake his hand and they just call you somewhere. You wake up the next day, one leg cannot walk. The other day, your ears cannot hear well. Are we together? By the Friday, your passport is missing. Powers. He said, through the greatness of thy power, every village, including my own, has witches and wizards. They know I'm on earth. It's not that they love to leave me to do ministry. Power. Power. Kabbalah Kotaya. He said, behold, I give you power. Exousia. Power. Step into my shoes step into my office listen i'm trusting god that after tonight you will no longer be at the mercy of principalities and powers there are some of you who cannot go to the village the last time you went what happened to you even you you were scared but now 
you go to the village and overnight in three hours you hear that things have you were not praying oh you carried something mysterious to that village two weeks after your arrival you see five buildings springing up a development that the devil has refused anybody that organizes crusade in your village never finishes after two days he's sleeping and he dies come on now the devil deceives you listen i have studied satan carefully because i didn't like the way i was afraid of him my fear of satan was getting too bad and i said no i can't be afraid of satan like this i need to settle down and study him one of the ways you conquer fear is to study what gives you the fear and look at it and say what is in this thing really what is in it what is in satan that threatens people i found out the strength of satan is ignorance satan works with information he plants that seed to you so a spirit you are sleeping in your house and you hear something on your zinc that's satan now he knows and watch what he begins to do he used that experience to plant pictures in your mind what could be there hi an arm robber is there no not an arm robber the other day that's how my grandfather said anytime you hear that sound barrenness is inevitable any and listen he's working with your mind you are you are having faith in that thing the moment your faith is there because whoever believes there shall be a performance it doesn't matter what you believe you hear that thing in your zinc and get up he that cometh from above is above all jacos kata let me tell you the truth the devil will go back there are demons when they send them to people they disobey say no 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 they disobey the implication the risk involved in that espionage is too risky devilish harbor is somewhere they carry your name because a brother say he wants to marry you and you say no then he carries your name to a harbor and the man has the effrontery to call your name let him try it after tonight listen listen i'm not motivating you i'm demystifying satan this fear of satan is why many of us never rise i cast out devils almost every day and i sleep sound Go and ask them. And nothing shall by any means. Whatever I do against God has nothing to do with Satan. This is between me and God. The law is nothing shall by any means. So that you don't just say I was angry. I shouted at my wife today. Hey, hey, hey. Satan is coming. You are joking. My shouting at my wife is God. I owe an apology. As for you, the casting remains so. Regardless of the condition. Nothing shall by any means listen to me i'm preaching to you don't let satan deceive you no sir god is not like that we have misrepresented him and it has given access access for the devil jesus finished whipping people and flogging people in the temple and went straight for a crusade and casted out all kinds of devils do you believe what i'm sharing with you the anointing it is the anointing that brings favor it is the anointing that brings increase there are some of us anything they give you remains like that forever there is no potential of growth i have seen people in my life listen i have seen people in my life that have been surprised you see them 10 years ago you see them 10 years later and ichabod the glory has the, they are still the same way same house same room same financial level i say ah luta continua victoria is scattered that's a cost never say that thing the bible said the path of the just it takes power to keep shining in this wicked economy that we live in someone just sees you and say uh -uh, you are the last born in a family of 12. what audacity do you have to say you will feed us there are families where is the women that feed the men do you know that no matter how hard working you rise up as a man something must happen to crash you shout no way, no way. Habba. 
there are families the men never reach 50 they must die and leave the children for the innocent women you see women old women in a place where are the men some of you they've already told you that the moment you are 25 there is a stranger that comes to you there is a secret nonsense marriage in fact there are some of you you did all kinds of occultic things by your parents you still have rings and the rest and now you are born again and you are now asking those demons have refused to go there is something you can engage in let me tell you that will shatter that yoke into pieces when i discovered who satan really was i stopped wasting my time i said so this is what has made me afraid you are not even the worst of all spirits come on now satan's assignment is to magnify himself in our lives he loves it when he's magnified out of proportion now don't get me wrong those who claim satan is cheap and he just give away i hope that while you are claiming that you have the requisite arsenals to ignore satan just as a result of pride and say i can just quote a scripture he will eat you up and spit you out don't get me wrong satan deserves that honor for being a cunning serpent for many years it is through knowledge that the just is delivered, not through bold face for nothing. Are we together? Listen, nothing changes in your life until the anointing comes. You have to believe this. Hmm. Time will never change anything in your life. Time will never change anything in your family. Time will never change anything in your marriage. Time will never change anything in your body. When God wants to help you, he introduces the anointing. The Holy Spirit, the custodian, the conveyor of the anointing. Are we together? In the Bible, when men encountered the anointing, it spelled a change of story in their lives. It was very clear that when the anointing came upon them, it was time ordinary people in the bible aaron and his sons moses joshua down the line when the anointing came upon them they changed in strange and mysterious way someone is changing tonight someone outside is changing tonight you you may be among the crowds hear me some of you are even at the overflow there you are just standing and watching and saying god could you be talking about me yes sir yes ma he's talking about you don't mind what they have said about you let the anointing come on you and you will watch your life brothers and sisters change in a way and manner that will surprise you i have seen what this anointing can do to people i have seen people change in supernatural ways this anointing can translate to the power to get wealth that in two weeks two weeks 14 days a man's life can change he will be like god what is this what is this a gentleman shared with me one of one of my boys shared with me um a, a story very very touching uh, testimony the mother had been following this and i think it was just yesterday night or so the mother got an alert from somebody of over 300 and something thousand sent to her yesterday i don't know if she testified here or it was right i said they should come and testify think about that it takes power you have been tolerating a lot of nonsense in your life tonight you have to be angry and say lord i'm tired of getting angry with satan i need the anointing i need the grace what you are receiving tonight is impartation impartation is a transference of possibilities impartation is not the rubbing of oil on your head you can carry ordinary oil that you can use to fry egg or or cook rice and just say love blah, 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 just and rub on your head and you just rub something to make your skin moist it doesn't produce it, it, oil is not a charm this jar of oil you see will do you no good until it is anointed so it's not just because there is a jar of oil are we together now the jar will not just do you good just because it is anointed many people idolize oil idolize it they, those things in themselves don't give you any power it takes power to come upon them by a vessel that is anointed to make it anointed tonight brothers and sisters i agree with god for you that your life will change tonight i agree with god that there will be expansions and explosions 
What will this anointing do to you tonight? Or do for you tonight? Number one. This anointing that is coming upon you tonight will bring you into a dimension of strange favor. Write it down. You need to know what the anointing will do. Because you've been receiving all kinds of anointings. But what was spoken into the oil, you have to believe it. God has given us samples of breakthroughs in the course of these seven days. Favor is real. Favor can happen to anybody. Anybody. Strangers can arise to favor you. Yes, sir. You can have money and not have favor. That you have money does not mean you have favor. Favor is not about money coming. Favor is about men coming and whatever they come with. That includes money. But not left for money alone. If you have money and you don't have men coming to your life, you don't have favor. Favor is known by the strange coming of men. To come and meet your need, not to come and inconvenience you. The second thing that this, this anointing, this impartation that is coming upon you, is a strange grace for multiplication. It's called the Mim Shak anointing. Please believe it. There is a grace that can come on a man's business, upon his career, upon his ministry, and take you right from wherever village you are and give you a voice. It gives whatever you are doing wings in the spirit. It's true. Can turn a musician's life around. Can turn a businessman's life around. Can turn a preacher's life around. You are there seated and God, do you know, I don't know how many times I've had these testimonies. Some of you listening know it's true. How many times angels appear before people in meetings and transfer koinonia messages and leave. They come as human beings. A service is going on. Or after a service, give strategic people messages and then just walk away and go. Angels don't just act as if they are foolish. They act in response to what the Holy Spirit tells them. The anointing is the director of how and why angels function. Understand this. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Listen. The third thing this anointing will give you is unusual influence. Please believe it. Influence is not something you bully people to get. Influence is not an issue of age. Influence is not even an issue of I've traveled abroad. There is an oil. There is a grace. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Even God, thy God, has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. There is an anointing that can give a man influence. There is a strange grace that can give you influence among your contemporaries. You are the last one, but God gives you a voice. Listen, you know, one man of God was talking to me one time and said, Apostle, how come it looks like in your ministry you never lack excellent hands? And I tell him, you can't look for those people by putting CV. There is an anointing that draws people. That draws a kind of people. You will find the best of the best of everything in this ministry. It's not pride. I'm telling you the secret today. It's not just some searching around the internet to say you are good, come. No, there is an anointing that brings them. When that anointing comes upon you, God can bring just five people to your life that will give you what 10,000 people cannot give. It's not always about quantity. It's about quality. God will give you two friends that will be equivalent to 90 friends in your life. The grace for influence. I have seen how men of God have ignored this grace. And they have tried to bully men of God. They have tried to bully others. They have tried to usurp on young people. You are my son. You are my daughter by force. You are my this. Just because they are hoping they will use the people to climb. 
it's not about all those things it's not about being mean you see me greet people here after service i'm hugging the children because this influence and honor is an anointing it's not by doing bold face and acting look i don't play child's play all that one is is is, is complex when that honor is on you people will look at you and not know the reason why people are strangely loyal to you the anointing brings loyalty in a strange way that's why god must make sure you walk with him so you don't take advantage of people listen people don't just become loyal to a man just because no 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 it's not about giving people money you can give somebody money who will insult you tomorrow loyalty is not just by faking it's not even by wearing good clothes you can wear anything you want to wear there is an anointing politicians know this that's why they go to Habalis and collect charm and find out that it's like a whole territory becomes loyal there are great leaders who oppress people pastors who oppress church workers they are looking for loyalty you are praying for somebody you hear somebody say ah Ejimi is praying for me no i'm the only one you am the boss in this place that's insecurity this grace for influence can sit upon your life and turn you into a wonder i have seen what people has have done to this young man talking to you i've had to beg people to cut down on certain things so that people don't persecute me and say human beings are worshiping me influence influence it's not by manipulation there is an anointing that brings for influence and it's with all humility i say it you don't go around any part of this city and see one single poster one single handbill not for anything yet there are people there sitting on the fence look at the people that have come sitting on the fence five overflows thereabout, seated everywhere over 47 nations of the world brothers and sisters it takes an anointing it's not just grammar i'm not the smartest preacher i'm not the deepest preacher in terms of revelation i pray for you that this grace will come upon your life and change you in a way that will surprise you hallelujah i travel all the time with the head of department of media and there's it's always a team of uh, from worship team media and then the protocol and he asked me a question i think it was early this year he said why don't you allow that the photos you have snapped or the encounters with some of the big people in this country why don't you allow let's put it on facebook you know ah this guy snapped with this this guy snapped with this one and i told him i said it's not necessary it's not necessary that you see me snapping with um for lauren show like or snapping with this person and i say oh you mean this guy he has met the vice president he has met this all those things are human ways of trying to get this anointing if this thing is on you bar it's on you period if it's not on you it's not there it's as simple as that it's not about all this manipulation and so you go and borrow a jeep and sit down and say great is thy faithfulness it's not your car you are looking for respect no or you go and steal the picture of a crowd i'm not i'm not being sarcastic please don't get me wrong and say well there is a revival 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 and you carry another man's crowd and put and put pictures of somebody holding crutches whereas is why fake what can be real in your life there is a grace for influence lucifer carried it the anointed cherub that covereth he can cover a territory with his ideologies I have seen people on this earth with that anointing i have seen business people with that anointing i have seen families with that anointing hill song that's the anointing walking there you see those young boys just strumming their guitar yet you don't know what takes them all over the world there are people carrying that grace joyce mayer you listen to her and you are sleeping yet you cannot know why her book will go even to your village you go to your village and see somebody reading the book and you are wondering and say my cassette my my what they call it by my cd i waxed an album i'm just a few kilometers to my village it refused to enter there there is an anointing meme shark the strange grace that's what happens to the messages that's what happens to what god is doing in this ministry do you believe that this can come upon you yes sir
can come upon you. Number what now? The fourth anointing that I believe and I trust God, I trust God with all my heart that you will receive is an anointing for strange signs and wonders. Strange signs and not just signs and wonders. Strange signs and wonders that through your own hands, the things that God will do to you will begin to surprise you. We just started the, the public relations department this year and I remember one time meeting with the leaders and they were telling me of the dramatic miracles that are happening while they pray for people on phone. Now, these gentlemen love God and they are filled with the Holy Spirit. But probably they did not, they did not anticipate that you can casually just pray. There is an anointing that can come on a rod, a rod, ordinary rod, and it will part the Red Sea. There is a grace for signs and wonders that somebody comes to you and says, Sister, I hear you attend Koinonia. I cannot meet Apostle, but I hear you attend Koinonia. And you say, what is it? He may be busy, but let me pray. He has prayed for us. That grace is working. Say, you say, let's just pray. And he said, Father, I lift up my voice to you concerning this woman. I hear that supernaturally they need 500,000 by 10 o'clock tomorrow. I agree with you. And by 1 a.m., the woman gets an alert, 500,000 dot. She will run to you and say, woman of God, what did you even say? She won't call you sister again. It takes a woman of God to produce that miracle. That you can go back home and say, I came back from an impartation in Koinonia. And your father said, what, does, what good does that do to us? Go and see all the letters that are piled in the table there. Number one, they have said your mother is dying. Number two, they have said your other sister, nothing is wrong. Number three, they have said your sister is about to leave her marriage next week because everything is in shambles. And you say, can you just give me a few hours? You carry those letters and you know that these hands are an extension of the hands of Jesus. They are not just instruments to eat because something came upon it. And you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I agree with you. I agree with you. And all of a sudden, by the next day, that man is sleeping and an angel of the Lord appears. Why are you doing this to my daughter? Behave yourself. It is because of this your heaven is not closing. And she wakes up in the morning and the guy is there kneeling down. He said, let's, let's make this work. Let's make this marriage work. Are we together? Some of you will take this anointing back to your churches and God will use it to help your various pastors. You know that they are sincere. Some of them love God and they are crying for these dimensions. But how to access it is what is not there. And God says, can you help that man of God? He loves God. But the reason why the church is going down is because there is no supply of this dimension. Signs and wonders. Supernatural signs and wonders. Supernatural signs and wonders. The last thing that I'm going to pray for is grace for a dimension of kingdom wealth and prosperity that will surprise you. If you don't believe it, you can write the other four and leave this one. It's unto you according to your faith. I have told you, I am very vocal. I love the Lord by the grace of God and with all humility. My passion for God and for the things of the Spirit has been vetted by the body of Christ. And so when I teach about finances and I talk about this, it's not in any way to promote carnality. But I will never sit down knowing the benefit of kingdom wealth and prosperity to the quality of your life, to your children, to your family and kingdom advance and deny that dimension finding expression. It's a grace that is upon my life. It's a grace that is upon this ministry and it's a grace that must speak in your life. I think his promise that says it so beautifully that entering into a level of wealth and abundance will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life that your prayer's time will be spent worshiping god not saying oh god this rent oh god tea oh god there is no sugar and you find out that you waste six hours crying needless cries oh 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 oh, oh.
trust the Lord that this mantle for wealth, this grace for wealth, if you don't believe that there is such an anointing called the power to prosper, I've taught you that there are three dimensions of wealth. There is transactional wealth. Wealth that comes by selling your value. Whether your education, whether uh, an idea, whatever it is that you take. There is transformational wealth. Wealth that is given on account of a perception of your impact in the lives of people. But the third dimension is called sovereign wealth. Wealth by the finger of God. By the finger of God. All of them are important. But brothers and sisters, for some of us, the emergencies in our lives require God showing up like the man of war that he is. We are going to sing this song one more time. And I want you to open your spirit truly. Because as this impartation happens, as this oil comes upon you to round up these seven days, we are going to sing the song and then we'll pray. Please, I want you to be tired of where you are in life. Be tired of where your family is. Hey, hey. works in this kingdom that we understand the systems of the kingdom and we engage them through knowledge and change not a few people command complete transformation complete transformation hallelujah let's pray father say it again father in the name of Jesus Tonight, I declare that I'm tired of my current level. I'm tired of where I am. I'm tired of where my family has been kept. Tonight, by your anointing, lift me to a new dimension. Open your mouth and begin to pray. New dimension in ministry. New dimension spiritually new dimension in finances pray oh lift your voice and pray shakata pata keta da balata pata re to wata lata keta shakata shakata keta shapata keto kete shalata eli to apa Shake <laughs> Break it 
Hallelujah. Isaiah 10 27. And it shall come to pass in that day. Tonight is that day. And it shall come to pass in that day. That the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke, the yoke of delay, the yoke of retrogression, the yoke of begging as a generation, that yoke shall be taken from off your shoulder. Sir. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every cause, every yoke, every spell, every enchantment over my life, over my family, I declare that by the anointing, it is broken forever. Lift your voice and pray. Pray. Oh, Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. By the authority. In the finished work of Christ. I declare. To principalities. To powers. To familiar spirits. That tonight. I have been called. Out of every tribe. Every covenant. Every enchantment. The sins of my fathers. Will no longer work in my life. I exempt myself. Lift your voice and pray. Every covenant. Rika to kavala gatia, ito palate, shipata, ipala gatia, tala makosa, ipala bata 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 bata, rika 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 Veil. That has covered my glory. That has covered my every glory. Veil. Every veil. Every That has hijacked my honor. That has hijacked my In the name of Jesus. In the name of I Jesus. tear that veil to pieces. Lift your voice and pray. pray. Cover your glory. This is arise. Shine. Arise, shine, arise, shine, arise, shine, 
Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak. I speak to every area of my life. To every area of my life. My spiritual life. My spiritual life. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. My body. My body. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. My finances. My finances. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Family life. Family life. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. My career. My career. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. By the anointing. By the anointing. Rise to destiny. Rise. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every aspect of my life, rise to your place in destiny. Hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Ah, yeah, yeah. There's fire burning in this place. Listen. The Bible says, listen carefully. It says, Saul, the son of Kish. Kish lost his donkey. It left him. It was his means of livelihood. And it left. As soon as they encountered a man with an anointing, the donkey started going back home. Are you ready to call back things that have left you? Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every relationship. Every relationship. Every opportunity. Every opportunity. Every unction. Every unction. Every access, every access that left my life, that left my life by the anointing, by the anointing, I call you back. I call you. Lift back. your voice and begin to pray. Business opportunities, educational opportunities. I call you back. I call you back. I call you back. I call you back. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Favor. Favor. You are a dimension of the Holy Spirit. You are a dimension of the Holy Spirit. I open up my life. I open up my life to your influence. To your influence. Lift your voice and pray. Favor. Favor is not just a thing. Favor is a spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to be guiding on how this oil will be distributed and I'll give us instructions. But in the next two minutes, please. The specific issues that must live your life now not tomorrow listen now if you don't have faith for it now pray on something else are we together now there are things in the bible that say as they went but there are things that the bible say immediately listen release your faith i'm not a fool release your faith don't just sit down and say can god make a wilderness overnight Abba, we're talking of god here If it's time for you to get pregnant as a wife, don't just look and say, I've not met with my husband. No. 
you get pregnant at the instance of the word of God you are sick in your body there is a load of challenge on you there are demons oppressing you there's all kinds of fire on your mountain it's time for you to have a testimony open your mouth in one minute and tell the Lord the things that must live your life Every one of them. Every one of them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. Please listen. This is this is the crescendo of this seven days prayer. Many of you, what God is about to do in your life now, it will surprise you, ba? truly speaking, in a way that will make you respect God in a fresh dimension. Hallelujah. Now, there are so many people, and this is what will happen. Um, I'm going to appoint a few people now. In this auditorium, there may be just three of them. And then, overflow one, overflow two overflow three everything from the the last place of the fence of cgc right there is overflow four and then those standing at the back of overflow three just at the back of overflow three that's overflow five are we together now so this is the main auditorium so you understand what i'm saying overflow one all the people here overflow two right from wherever till the end of CGC fence. Overflow 3 is the main, um, the, 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 the space outside there. Overflow 4 is everything from the end of CGC's fence to wherever people are now. And then overflow 5 are those who are standing across the corner right to the other street there. That's, that's the overflow. This is what we are going to do. Please make sure that this oil comes upon you. Even if you have a child, even if the child is sleeping, just touch the child. You don't have to fetch the oil and try to idolize it. It's not about idolatry. Just a touch. You can take one if you like. Put on your head. And Did you bring all those documents? We are going to pray. Just leave them. Don't worry. Leave them there. We are going to deal with them. Please be patient with me. And let God surprise you tonight. Are we together now? Except it is not God that has instituted what we are doing. Some of you, you will not even be able to share the testimonies. You will watch, it will be, people will ask you, which charm did you hold? What happened to you? There are some of you in ministry that will go back after tonight. You will, you will stand like this and say, so this is how God works. This thing is not trial and error. God is a God of systems. Are we together now? So I want you to agree with me as we pray. Please, no distraction forget about this is not husband and wife now this is you standing between you and god this is not neighbor we came brothers and sisters leave anyone you came with this is your destiny with god now it's not the time to laugh and pinch around like the devil who want to cheat many people now it's at this time where he told elijah if you can see he was looking but he said if you can see there are some of you as this oil comes upon you all of a sudden your eyes will be open and you will see strange supernatural things. So be sensitive. Hallelujah. Be sensitive. Um, what will happen is there are five, five. So we can do three, three. That means three bowls here. Yeah? We'll fill it with the oil. We'll keep adding. And then three outside. Please protocol work so that we can arrange it. Please, I know that there are lots of people. The protocol people are smart enough. They have been trained. Everybody will receive of the oil, especially for overflow four and five. Please, our securities, please help us so that we don't have any chaos. Everybody just be patient. The oil will get to you. 
don't just try to hold it and try to turn it in a jar all alone be patient be patient if you have a bottle of oil after service i can pray for you on it but for now just cooperate please let's not make the place rowdy and let there be no fighting just cooperate with any official you see within your area and in a few minutes will be done while all of that is happening the worship team will be leading us and then we are going to pray in the name of jesus christ we lift up this jar this is ordinary oil you have led me to pray over it but father i pray by the anointing of the holy spirit we are not acting you are real lord prove your power in an unusual dimension tonight in the name of jesus lord i pray for every single person upon whom this oil will come those who are online you can get any bottle of oil or anything around you and connect by faith as i'm praying is reaching you there lord we call this the oil of strange results we call this the oil of wonder we call it the oil of favor we call it the oil of influence we call it the oil of increase and expansion we call it the oil of revival let prayer lives jack back to life let the gifts of the spirit be activated let mantles come upon your people in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the anointing of the holy spirit father strange dimensions in the name of jesus strange dimensions strange fire strange dimensions strange dimensions in the name of jesus be the first partaker of this grace be the first partaker the first partaker in the name of jesus the first partaker of this grace be the first partaker of this grace in the name of jesus please come and hold this be the first partaker of this grace in the name of jesus christ be the first help him please the first partaker of this grace in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus now pastor jimmy will be here he'll be standing here victor um the protocol please coordinate it it's going to be very fast um just bring the jars turn them now turn them turn them quickly let's just fill them and then we'll go to the respective places please let's be in an attitude of prayer what you're going to do is just follow as they direct you once they receive it they'll go down there someone hold the jars i believe there's still some more you just touch it on your head don't touch it on any document don't worry we are coming there you return back to your seat you are blasting in tongues and prophesying everything that must appear in your life are we together now thank you lord jesus lord we pray that let there be miracles right now in the name of jesus so some of you will be watching them so that the ones that are almost finished as you can hold one you can stand here whoever is standing with me aaron please the rest speak it to your various places father we anoint this oil and in the name of jesus as it comes upon people let there be strange results from the main auditorium here overflow one overflow two overflow three overflow four overflow five change the stories of people in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah god bless you go ahead quickly quickly please we cry holy 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 Come to Yeshua, Shekinah is here. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Come to Yeshua, Shekinah is here. We cry, holy, holy, yeah. holy, holy. Come to Yeshua, Shekinah is here. We cry, holy, 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 holy.
Rekete kata bata kata bata kato. Rekata bata kata bata teka teka kato. Rekete bata kato. New dimension. New level. New dimension. First fruit victory. First fruit victory. Keep praying. Don't stop. Keep praying. Shaka parakoto sutabala. I'm moving forward. Strangely manifesting the glory of God, defying all the laws of men, defying the expectations of men, rising by the spirit, rising by the anointing, rising by the spirit. Don't be tired of praying. Something is happening to you. Something is happening to you. Prophesy over your finances. Prophesy over your health. The word of the Lord is upon you. The word of the Lord is upon you. No devil can stand this impartation. The word of the Lord is upon you. No curse, no spell, no divination, no enchantment. We are breaking out at last by the Spirit of the Living God. The word of the Lord is upon you. Send sent by his anointing keep praying don't be tired you're doing something to your spirit man the hand of god is upon you things are shifting in the spirit doors are opening ladders have been created preaching your expectation and your results outside pray those online use the oil you have upon your head and that of your family members and begin to pray in the spirit call for the things that be not 
don't doubt what you are doing this is how it works don't doubt what you are doing don't let the devil plant unbelief and make you think you are wasting your time no you are not the Lord will so surprise you Something special, supernatural about your name, Jesus. Something happens when I man. Hallelujah. Hold on. I know that there are still, especially for those of us in the overflows, we are still making contact with the oil. Don't stop. Just continue what you are doing. But please listen to me. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. I want you to pick up any point of contact that you came with. There is a strong anointing that I sense upon me now. any point of contact your document certificate whatever it is job sack letter court case letter whatever it is he said be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known let your request i want to pray for you listen let me tell you this i have learned by the spirit if you don't have any point of contact you can use your hand your hand is the symbol of your work your hand is the symbol of your productivity i have learned that everything on earth can hear it just depends on who is speaking are we together god has not called you i know for many of us this thing looks like is some form of for many of us this looks like it is some form of nonsense others will watch and laugh and you there at your house or wherever it is you are connecting with us from around the world it's not too late if there is nothing write your challenge and lift it before god and say lord this thing is not giving me joy your certificate whatever it is there's more oil here if there's anyone in need of it please make sure you participate all the overflows i want to pray i want you to believe if you have never believed a man of god in your life please just believe this once the bible says believe in the lord your god so shall he be established he said believe in his prophets this thing you see is not a vocation it's not something a man chose for himself i want to pray for you from the depth of my spirit i want to put an anointing upon those items i don't care what it is some of you are lifting your jam sleep for your jam tomorrow some of you are lifting your certificate you've been a graduate for 10 years 20 years no job some no promotion some is a threat letter by anything a court or whatever it is i want to pray for you I just need you to believe to agree with me some of you is your business ideas some is your crashing business some whatever it is 
now in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god the one who gave this anointing i decree i speak over every document and every point of contact represented in the name of jesus i command speed upon that document in the name of jesus christ for every document lifted that is a threat a challenge to a family to an individual to your reputation in the name of jesus i veto that situation now i veto that situation now every document lifted that is a certificate or a means that can be exchanged for value and the devil has grounded your certificate you are all graduates in your family but there's nothing to show for from tonight in the name of jesus i give that certificate a voice in the realm of the spirit i give it a voice in the realm of the spirit i command it to bring jobs to you i command it to bring opportunities to you in the name of jesus christ for some of you that which you are lifting is a photo of your loved ones representing the chaos in your family in the name of jesus may the lifter of men in a strange way lift every one of you out of any predicament out of every predicament for some of you what you are lifting is a medical report is a threat letter from hell that you have cancer that you have hiv that you are barren your tubes are blocked that you are important as a man in the name of jesus i change that medical report now i change that medical report now there are some of you what you are lifting is your project not just your school project job project whatever project that your lifting is dependent upon in the name of jesus I command all those who will supervise you to favor you there are some of you what you are lifting is your house rent what you are lifting is a building project that is not completed and there is no hope of raising money anywhere I decree and declare by the finger of God I call forth helpers to your life now. I call forth helpers to your life now. For some of you, what you are lifting is your marriage certificate. That your marriage is at the verge of tearing into pieces. Because of what the devil wants to do. In the name of Jesus, I mend that home right now. I mend that home right now. For some of you what you are lifting is a missing organ in your body they say you don't have this you don't have that this is absent in your body whatever should be in your body and is not in the name of jesus i call for a replacement now for some of you what you are lifting is your atm card your checkbook or your phone as a sign in the name of jesus i declare the kind of alerts that will begin to come in the name of the lord god of heaven let it surprise you let it surprise you let it surprise you i pray for every ministry represented here whatever has created an embargo that you will not rise beyond certain levels that souls will not be saved through your ministry 
that lives will not be changed in the name of jesus i release an anointing upon you now i release an anointing upon you now go and do exploits in the name of jesus anyone in business here i prophesy to you i don't care what your business has looked like between now and the next two months may your business flourish in a way that will surprise you i say it again between now 60 days from today in the name of jesus enter a strange dimension of results hallelujah i'm praying for people here who are trusting god to give them properties if you have the faith for this prayer watch my god surprise you i decree and declare that between now and half of the year you may not even have up to 1000 naira in your account now but in the name of jesus i put properties in your hands i put properties in your hands let them mock you and see what god can do i put properties in your hands i pray for every student here if there is any result that is not your own that you are carrying something you know i don't care whether it's a mistake that was made in 100 level and now you are even spilling over help them please help them in the name of jesus by the ministry of angels i command a strange change of results a strange change of results a change of results a change of results hear me i want to pray for those who are not doing well you have done your best it's as if there is an embargo on your mind you are not lazy you study you enter the exam hall and everything evaporates when you fail you now remember take note something will happen to you now i decree and declare let an anointing right now i'm feeling it on my own head a strange anointing receive a grace for supernatural intelligence everywhere main auditorium overflow one two three i empower your mind ten times better ten times better i pray for our dear ones i hear there's jam from tomorrow am i right from tomorrow till when from today or oh, the road jam today let's agree i'm sure you know what god does with jam in this ministry i know you have read but you need a prophetic backing let's make this thing work once and for all in the name of jesus i pray for you in a way you have never seen may the holy ghost hold your hand and produce a wonder from your jam may the holy ghost hold your hand and produce a wonder from your jam I'm praying for you any mortal man on earth who beat his chest and say over his dead body for you and your family to rise I stand here and I answer his prayer anyone who said over his dead body for you to marry over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered now may that prayer be answered now every devil every wizard every necromancer that manipulates the elements of life and declare that they will victimize you i command the earth to open and swallow them listen just follow me a few minutes and we're done if there is any of you that your name has been taken to any shrine i don't care where and all kinds of incantations some of us come from very wicked families in the name of jesus not only will your name come out of there both the herbalists 
and the sender may the earth open and swallow them both the harbalists and the sender may the earth open and swallow them both the harbalists and the sender may the earth open and swallow them both the harbalists and the sender may the earth open and swallow them I know you don't like what I'm saying don't mind me just let me finish praying I say again that every territory whether a village whether a town where there are controlling powers sitting on the destinies of men that you do your best but you never move forward I command a sword of vengeance tonight I command a sword of vengeance tonight people have left God in a heartbeat because they were looking for jobs people left ministry because they got visa they told everybody they had set up their leadership they set up protocol as soon as a door opened they said just continue serving God I will serve him from afar off I go and God said this is how much you love me I'm teaching you this otherwise you will be disappointed at your own life when you see the way you will forget about God in the presence of certain realities it is encounters that can keep us regardless how you rise regardless the lifting that comes to your life and regardless the challenges that surround you you are still standing many believers are falling by the wayside especially within this end time you see lots of believers after 10 years 20 years of serving the Lord respectfully speaking they now come up to say look i've been living a lie i don't care about this thing again i'm not serious with god i quit no encounters from altar call to spiritual growth most believers are not serious with god because they have not found god to be anything to be serious about are we following now there are many young people who are only serving God because they are under the custody of their parents and they do not have an option otherwise. It's not because they love that God. Let's do Bible study and they grudgingly sit down and do it. And then for many parents, the day you now leave them to themselves, you will be marvelously surprised that the person you have been calling pastor was never interested in anything about God other people hold on to God because they are in school and they want to do well they are hoping he would just escort them until they are done and once they are done they say God I've used you enough you find your way and go while I live my life are we together now there are others who do this business of God because they have been taught that God can bless and when you are in ministry you can get honorarium when you are in ministry you can get all kinds of things someone can come and dash you a car somebody can give you a house and when they try they apply for jobs it doesn't work they apply for whatever they just come and then they start ministry and a semblance of passion and then after one year they realize they have to rent an auditorium they realize that there are things that are coming they count the offering and it's nothing to write home about and they say God I've tried for you I gave you one year of my life I'm not ready to continue being a fool like this because we do not have encounters a time came when the disciples of Jesus became very frustrated listen when Jesus began his journey with them I remember Jesus telling them all kinds of things and they ran they left their fishing a time came Peter was waiting for Jesus to come and he said look we have left all to follow you if you are deceiving us tell us now so that we can redeem the time and get back to what we're doing and Jesus looked at them they were offended they were frustrated the staying power to finish strong was not there as soon as they captured Jesus and they thought that this superstar would just defeat everyone just shake his hand and everyone will be under the anointing when jesus gave himself watch what happened the bible says they ran away is it in your bible 
every one of them remember shortly before that time peter vowed jesus even pleaded with peter let me wash your feet he said no way not you now peter ran away the fathers of faith and the patriarchs that we celebrate today world over were not just people who were interested in serving god alone these were men and women who had solid encounters they had encounters with god encounters that would never they, they were not going to change from it most of my experiences and the new seasons in my life have come as a result of encounters most of them most of them have come as a result of encounters now let me tell you this there are negative demonic and satanic encounters pay attention i must tell you this for instance there are many people today in deception and the confidence that their deception thrives on is the encounters that they had there are many people who believe they went to heaven i tell you by the authority of scripture where they went was not heaven i can tell you this both the description the experience and the result tells you it's not heaven they went to there are people today who claim they had out of body experiences and many of them interacted with strange spirits familiar spirits they thought it was the holy spirit do you know that almost every error in the body of christ today came as a result of these same encounters many people will tell you i had an encounter either with an angel or a spirit and he told me right and from there they begin to ship in and advocate all kinds of error people have gone to fast for days and they met a spirit because you see i'll be sharing with you that one of the principal triggers for encounter is hunger hunger when you find a believer who is hungry please be fast to guide that person because satan too looks for hunger hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so you want to start on a journey i want to know you i want to live for you i want to serve you i want to love you with all my heart that drives you to a seven days dry prayer and fasting and you are praying you are lying down you're rolling left right and center and satan finds an opportunity your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit are heightened because of that kind of consecration and satan comes as an angel of light and plants all kinds of demonic and dangerous seeds i will tell you why i'm teaching what i'm teaching tonight it's very important encounters are powerful encounters are important but if i do not give you a few guidelines because i fear for my generation our appetite for rema our appetite for new dimensions our appetite for the angelic realm our appetite for the prophetic realm is that is driving us into dimensions that if not guided you have not yet seen error that will come to the body i tell you in the next five six ten years if we do not create this apostolic guidance for the body of christ many young people will delve into different Different versions of error you will not even know what is authentic Christianity again are we together years ago in Zaria I remember I think I've shared it here. I don't know if I've shared it here there were some gentlemen who came in I think from Kano or so one gentleman just came believing he was Jesus not a servant of Jesus believing he was Jesus and based on their revelation they believed that i was like their john the baptist so they came and together with the boys I'm jokes apart i really mean it i wouldn't stand here if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking after service this boy stood wore a regalia 
and then someone was standing by his side i don't know i don't know what they call that one now and then when they stood before me i thought they were cracking jokes with me i was even laughing even though i was tired until i found out they were not playing now do you know listen 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 do you know those boys started with prayer prayer does many things so you have to understand the side effects of being open to the realm of the spirit and i will teach you how to create that guidance encounters it i've started by appreciating encounters but i am telling you there there is there is a management system that must be introduced fast because the body of christ is in trouble and it's encounters that will lead to the error of this generation of believers encounter satan has programmed arsenals of error that will be shipped to the body of christ through encounters pseudo christian experiences pseudo ex angelic experiences pseudo heavenly experiences and they bring all kinds of destructive doctrines with full assurance there are people today who hear voices they stepped into the prophetic and the holy ghost has never been part of any revelation most of those revelations come from demons do they hear well yes sir they hear now i'm not being listen listen when you when you are here don't just be listening and thinking of any man of god i'm teaching the body of christ because most of the people you see when you hear this some of us already have preconceived biases and the bias is because we've never really been serious with god it's not because we are passionate we've not been serious with god so anything that looks supernatural we fight it i'm not endorsing your laxity there are all kinds of errors those errors continue to be translated into teachings you see the thing about encounters is that every time you have an encounter the urge to document it and to share it is there and we live in a generation right now that is passionate with giving applause anything that is scarce anything that is new anything that looks like rema it looks like you derive your respect in the body of christ from the scarceness of your communication if we are not careful there will be bitter casualties i tell you this by the spirit many people are beginning to ship doctrines of demons and communicate them and many people keep swallowing it hook line and sinker satan is doing this because he knows that the spirit of revelation we're coming there when i teach you this you will know why we need the spirit of revelation mm. hallelujah there was a man of god many years ago I didn't have a direct relationship with him but we were so blessed by his teachings he was an amazing man he taught well he taught powerfully his teachings were powerful he was some somewhere around Asia eventually when I started studying his teachings after some time he started having all kinds of strange encounters and one day I had to say uh-uh 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 uh -uh, uh -uh, something 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 is wrong this guy began to teach all kinds of concepts he began to manifest attributes that i knew there were problems with today as i talk to you i'm not even sure he's in ministry again powerful man of god sincerely so i don't know what happened because of this search for encounters let me construct what i'm saying so you'll understand number one encounters are important we need encounters so that they create convictions but number two encounters are a two a two-edged sword on one hand they can bless and lift but on another hand they can bring conviction towards error that destroys are we together so people have delved into all sorts of things young believers especially have delved into all kinds of things there are people who have bought all sorts of books you get into a christian library right now and you look at the books that are there sometimes you want to run away because you see certain books the moment you open you wonder was it the holy spirit who inspired this 
there are dangerous and devilish books there are people who have read certain books and while they were reading the next thing they woke up and found out they had been lost they went into realms and dimensions interacted with strange spirits and came do you know how many religions are in the world we live in an internet age i give you as an assignment when you go type religions how many religions are in the world enter you will be amazed let me tell you this every single one of those religions have followers if they did not have followers they would not thrive enough to be seen as a religion and those followers came because of a semblance of results that came from encounters this is the secret that can preserve a destiny can preserve a ministry so that you don't start something and after 10 years you are teaching something else and at a point you don't even understand what you are doing again supernatural encounters now let me explain something why do encounters have negative side effects also i will tell you why because you see encounters especially if they are supernatural visionary encounters now you have to understand that an encounter does not have to be visionary to be called an encounter you can have an encounter without a vision once it is supernatural and it can imprint reality and conviction it's called an encounter are we together now but now i'm talking about visionary encounters do you know if you are open to the realm of the spirit there are many things that begin to happen to you immediately you are open to the realm of the spirit number one you'll find out that being open to the realm of the spirit either by the holy ghost or any other spirit already gives you an advantage over the earth realm whether it is true divination or it is true genuine spiritual encounter with the holy spirit the moment you are open to the realm of the spirit you already have an advantage above the ordinary believer number two the modus operandi of the earth realm is not the same as the realm of the spirit for instance in the realm of the spirit i do not have to talk to you to know what i'm saying i can transfer my thoughts directly to you without speaking if i hold this plant in the realm of the spirit i don't have to study it biologically you see that now yes i can transfer the feeling of that plant and have the impulse of that understanding you have to understand how i'm giving you certain examples in the realm of the spirit time and distance does not operate the way it works here if i need to move from here to this fan i will have to walk but in the realm of the spirit i can be here and immediately leave this spot and i am there an example what happens to you when you are in a dream you can be in a dream and in one moment you are in a house and then the scene changes you are somewhere else the same you and yet you are still there lying down in your room are we together now now in the realm of the spirit the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit is not the only one who has information any spirit at all including the devil has some information that is higher than this earth realm are we together now you would learn that there were times the bible records how that these these fallen angels came and the bible says they had interactions with the daughters of men they did not just come and meet them and produce giants out of them there were things that they taught them there were certain forbidden knowledge that was given to them satan himself is not an ignorant spirit i hope you know that because satan was once in heaven number two it was not satan alone that fell in heaven he fell with other spirits and there is no record of eroding the memory of the things that they know they still have that knowledge many people have interacted with strange spirits entered into all kinds of fraternities and covenants with them in exchange to superior knowledge they have used it in it they have used it to advance technology they have used it in different forms and in different fashions and some of them are honest enough to tell you that it was not just the making of themselves they were assisted by the realm of the spirit so when you are open to the realm of the spirit you will encounter many things can i tell you this 
if you do not know the road to go to a place and you find me there i can lead you anywhere and tell you that's where you were to go to this is what is happening to many people so they are open to the realm of the spirit because of the energy that is exerted through fasting and prayer spiritual exercises the moment you do that it is easy to have that ascendance in the spirit but the challenge is when you are there now satan is more than happy to hold your hand and usher you and he will give you a tour that is not consistent with the character of Christ. We return with some of these experiences and because we do not have a system of verification, this is also the reason why there is a lot of inaccuracy even in the prophetic. Because the prophetic works by the same formula. You are open to the realm of the spirit and you capture speakings, sights and sounds from the realm of the spirit. But when there is no system to order and organize it, based on scripture, you can download all kinds of things. That's why some work, some don't work. Because they are a capture of mass information from the realm of the spirit. What I'm teaching you may look a bit complicated, but just pay attention. You will understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I have had several visionary encounters. By the grace of God, this is a realm of reality that I live in. And I can tell you, if the Lord did not teach me the system of guidance that I want to provide for you, I probably would have been in all shades of error by now. All shades of error. The next thing I need to teach you about the realm of the spirit is that the realm of the spirit operates with similitudes. And you must understand not the activity, but the spirit, the meaning of those activities. Because one of the reasons why error has come into the body of Christ is because most times we want to repeat exactly what we saw happen in the realm of the spirit. So I give you an instance. If in the realm of the spirit, I... I look at these people in the realm of the spirit and I see them maybe dancing or doing some kind of thing. I may not stay to decipher the essence of what was happening. I will come down and want to act out the same thing I saw. So if I see someone walking five times from the realm of the spirit, it may be a prophetic typology of something but then i come physically and i now say well based on what i saw except if god says to act it out but i now tell the person do what you saw and by the time that person leaves and gets result someone else will come and before you know it it will become a spiritual pattern are we together now yes someone will now go to his house and say for me to get a miracle i must walk around five times with no understanding when god began to open me up to encounters i became troubled myself once upon a time those days in zaria there was such a move of the spirit and people started having extraordinary encounters where they would have what you know to be gold dust silver dust physically gold dust will begin to appear and it, there is an encounter that happened like that one time in church history it began to happen in several places and people started idolizing those encounters it didn't last more than three weeks and god seized it till tomorrow it was an act of his mercy otherwise some people would have built monuments around it you see that now there is a serious disclaimer listen do you know why i'm teaching you this don't just get believers born again and start stretching them fast 21 days fast 30 days unguided and unassisted it looks like an accurate spiritual journey but you are about to lead the people into experiences that their maturity cannot handle they will interact with devilish spirits they will return with arrogance from that encounter until the fatality that happens in their future brings you to remorse you now regret the fact that you expose the people this way we have to be careful there is a pattern for spiritual growth and if we do not submit ourselves to it we will be in trouble when jesus christ began to walk with the disciples we must follow the order and the pattern that he used to build the saints are we together now yeah. supernatural encounters the realm of the spirit is a very vast realm full of all kinds of possibilities having said this 
the bible itself listen carefully the bible provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters the bible scripture provides a road map into profitable spiritual encounters that means that it is possible for you to enjoy supernatural encounters benefit from them and yet not bring error out of them to deceive the body remember the morale of this teaching is to help us experience encounters one of the graces that we have enjoyed and we enjoy in this ministry is the grace for encounters but i will tell you why it has been effective without birthing all versions of error almost all encounters if left unbalanced will bring error almost all encounters if left unbalanced or even how do i put it now is, is it unbalanced will bring all kinds of error the body of christ today is like a patient in icu and encounters have brought these kinds of imbalance there are men and women of god today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters there are individuals today who will die believing what they are doing because it came from encounters and you see one thing about conviction is conviction will always lead to influence the moment you are convicted about something eventually someone will believe you i hope you're understanding what i'm teaching so far yes so the bible provides a biblical road map to supernatural encounters this was the first thing the lord began to teach me that before i am open to these extraordinary spiritual experiences i must understand the pattern of scripture so that all of these encounters i have will pass through the sieve of the word the sieve of how god behaves let me tell you there are many encounters in my life that scripture has filtered you will never hear me share them i have met many many demon spirits but it may just be one or two occasions that you hear me say that because you see when you are teaching this is the reason why most times i do not like to talk about my encounters do you know why i do not want you to build your conviction based on those encounters alone i want you to build your conviction based on these foundational encounters that i want to show you the average believer today who is exposed to the apostolic and prophetic ministry for instance will feel bad feel insulted and even feel unspiritual if they are not seeing visions it's almost like a stigma to your spiritual experience how long have you been born again 10 years do you see do you hear well not exactly i hear the holy ghost sometimes well, ah, I say, my goodness my god that means something is wrong with your christian experience so in a bid in a bid to honor um what you call your pursuit for spiritual growth there is such an itch and an appetite for any extra anything that just just let me hear a sound let me see a being demonic or spiritual let me just see something and hear something and because of that hunger on one hand god intends to give you these encounters but the reason why for many of us god does not bring those encounters is because you have not been taught how to decipher encounters to profit from them it's not because your spiritual level has not reached there god just wants to help you he's withdrawing these encounters is an act of mercy to help you stay true to doctrine Are we blessed this is how the lord taught me the apostolic and the prophetic ministry will expose you to various encounters you will not believe how many things i've seen standing here and preaching if i did not have this understanding that i'm teaching you you will never almost be able to settle down and teach a correct sermon every sermon will be turned to revelation because as for sight you will keep seeing 
the discipline to be able to turn down these things and focus on doctrine to mentor believers many sincere people do not have that every time their eyes see something there is an urge to say what they are seeing and it becomes a distraction to mentoring believers so you see that services become full of just revelatory processes not revelation of scripture prophetic revelations and there is a place for that don't get me wrong except that after a while you see that believers don't mature again and then the body of christ also has been baited into that state of that spiritual state when you come and sit down and the truth is being taught that interest to endure doctrine is not there again apostle this is 30 minutes you've not seen anything so pastors and ministers are under pressure if you want membership be ready to see something or say something i don't care what you know if you are not seeing and you are not saying anything be ready for empty pews we must balance this remember that i love the body of christ and remember that everything i say is to the intents that we become matured are we together now The average man of God is under severe pressure right now. Pressure for the prophetic, pressure to be able to reveal something. If you go to pray with someone and you bring Bible verses and you tell the person, Acts chapter this verse, this says this, you, you, you can even see the disconnect. We wasted our time, prepared honorarium, cooked food to come and receive this rubbish. There, you see that there, there is something wrong. While you are laughing, I want you to pay attention. You may not see the effect now. Let it continue down the line. That's why people lie, even with the prophetic. Because there has to be a way. That pressure makes people lie. We say things God is not saying. Body of Christ, hear me. This is not just a message for koinonia. This is a message for the body of Christ. When a man of God can teach scripture and help you understand the ways of God, he's under pressure because he looks like a fatal failure as far as ministry is concerned. I don't know what happened to your eyes and your ears, but we're not interested. And very clearly the person becomes frustrated. And as a result, he will say, you know what? If this is the formula for relevance, let me go for my fasting. And the devil says, exactly. This is what I wanted. He waits for you and once you are done with your fasting and all of that he now shows up and begins to introduce you into all kinds of things you find out that the more you see the more you are deviating from god's patterns many people did not start the way they are now let me tell you i submit to you it's difficult to live in the realm of encounters and still be sound and detailed this is what i want to teach you now there is a road map that if you follow if you follow you will never mislead the body through encounters your encounters will profit you and then profit the body if you are operating in the prophetic here please listen to me because this is this particularly will help you are we blessed So the Bible lets us know that encounters are very important. They create conviction. Whether encounters just with the word as you're studying or visionary encounters. When God was giving me a revelation about this ministry, I had supernatural encounters. I've shared some of them with you. My life is full of all kinds of encounters at different junctions of my life. You would hear fathers like Bishop David Oedipo share their encounters. They would tell you he was in an 18-hour vision. Is that true? And he saw this and that and explain it. Several other men of God will tell you there are others who were led by angels into realms and they were taught certain dimensions of the healing ministry. There are people who had all kinds of encounters some of them have profited the body of christ today now let me begin to teach you how to balance encounters rule number one no encounter is equal to doctrine no encounter no visionary encounter automatically becomes a doctrine 
do not make doctrine out of encounters do not make doctrine out of encounters doctrines listen encounters are they, they are classified in a category of dealings called personalized dealings personalized dealings means that is God's way of working with you to help you to be effective it will profit the body of Christ but do not turn encounters into doctrines so if let me, let me just leave that issue so that we don't create trouble in the body of Christ but it's very important for you to know this rule number one do not suddenly turn an encounter into a doctrine the doctrines of scripture are already stated it is true listen carefully there is a reason why these doctrines were put here in scripture and if we violate them do you know what will happen we will start creating pseudo christian experiences that are not exactly god rule number one do not create doctrines out of encounters number two every encounter must submit to scripture every encounter you must vet your encounters from the lens of scripture every encounter no matter even if it's jesus you see any encounter must submit to scripture no matter how extraordinary that encounter is number three you interpret encounters listen carefully or let me put it this way scripture becomes your lens for interpreting encounters do not interpret encounters with feelings you must go to scripture for instance two of us can have a vision i can see a chain in the spirit you can see a chain too it means different things to both of us we cannot create i'm saying this with every sense of respect and responsibility to the body of christ there are people who god has helped to bless the body in whatever capacity and we honor them but there is a big mistake do not say every time you see chains it means bondage it is not true you have to go to the bible to get your explanation not your mind a chain does not always mean bondage nakedness does not always mean shame so by the time i put all these things if you see a chain bondage if you see nakedness shame nakedness can mean intimacy it can mean you are growing with the holy ghost the Holy Spirit and Scripture has to interpret that. Are we together now? Most people just come up with their ideas about encounters. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. I think this should be it. And we ship it down and mislead people. That includes dreams. Look up, please. When you wake up from a dream, you don't just go and buy a book to interpret it, except if that book submits to Scripture. Are we together now many belief systems that have authorized satan to destroy us today came from these dreams and encounters take note of these rules one remember that no encounter in itself becomes a doctrine no the doctrine of scripture is written do you know the thing about doctrines doctrines should be taught and explained not created the doctrines that make for the maturity of the believer is already there you have to understand this every other thing supports our growth it does not create the basis for it the bible listen carefully the bible has already set the manual for the growth of the believer there's no need to invent another route for spiritual growth jesus the early church the patriarchs have set enough precedence there is no level of spiritual growth you want to attain onto that scripture has not provided the roadmap for so doctrines must submit to scripture and your interpretation must come from scripture not your ideas
scripture hallelujah your interpretation must come from scripture now listen very carefully the holy ghost when he began to teach me about encounters he taught me four cardinal encounters listen carefully don't assume you understand what i'm saying there are four foundational encounters and the holy spirit taught me that these are the major encounters every believer must have if you do not have these four encounters no matter which other encounter you have there will be trouble i'm going to run through them because of time why am i teaching you this so that when you begin to have extraordinary encounters because you see soaking yourself in this glory is exposing you to the realm of the spirit and you must be guided by scripture so that we do not have all kinds of error that come and then you connect the error to koinonia you say it was when i came for koinonia i fell under the anointing and i was in the realm of the spirit this is what i saw this is how i came and you see the way the devil does it is he will take advantage of this atmosphere to mislead you when you now tell someone it was in koinonia that thing started he will usually believe you and respect you but up you go into the realm of error Are you blessed i have kept these four encounters and i pay attention to them my entire life these are the encounters that have become pillars that guide me as i approach the realm of the spirit and i'm introducing you to this and this is also a message to the body of christ these encounters that i'm about to list and maybe briefly just touch they supersede any other encounter listen if these are the only encounters you have in your life and you never have any vision again in your life you will still fulfill your god-given mandate the foundational encounters that every child of god or everyone on earth should have are you ready for this have you understood everything i've said so far yes I want you to appreciate these things that we teach because number one they are consistent with scripture but number two some of these trainings came from a standpoint of pain blood and tears i'm praying that you will place value on them some of you what i'm saying you may not need it now until you keep rising one day you will see and thank the lord that you got this doctrinal balance even as you approach the realm of the spirit some of you as i share this with you the lord will use it to give you hope and give you confidence as far as your christian experience is concerned four encounters the lord taught me number one the first encounter that every believer must have is encounter with jesus the son of the living god please write it down it does not mean a visionary picture of jesus you can have an encounter through scripture an encounter through the word of salvation with jesus the son of the living god please write it down just be patient and write it down the bible says in john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son he says that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life can i tell you this no matter how many visions you see in your life if you do not have an encounter with jesus the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple as that encounters don't redeem people it is jesus that redeems people encounters don't give people eternal life it is the son of the living god so if you have 30 encounters in your life and jesus is not part of them you are on your way to hell ladies and gentlemen please hear me this is this these are safety nets an encounter with the son of the living god the first encounter that the hunger of any living being would push him to in that order is an encounter with the son of the living god it is a foundational encounter you must have you must pray that everybody around your life your church they must have that encounter what does it mean to encounter the son of the living god that the holy spirit 
through the ministry of the gospel will furnish the reality of the love of jesus the love of the father to your heart and bring you to a point where you accept the truth of his substitutionary sacrifice are we together now to the end that you receive of his life eternal life the bible says it's an encounter this is the record that god hath given us eternal life and this life is in his son he says whosoever hath the son hath life eternal everybody say encounter with the son there are many people today i'm sorry to use this expression but even people in ministry who operate the prophetic but have not had this encounter i hope you know that yes there are people who came just from tradition and then they came into the city and just continued what they were doing an encounter with the son of god i know people who started having visions and had prophetic inclinations even before they got born again yes that is a possibility your very wiring your very prophetic wiring can tilt you to the prophetic and people can begin to recognize it some of you know people like that in your villages they are sincere people they don't practice any evil that you know but we call them seers they have eyes that see they can tell you be careful and what they say will happen exactly so can i tell you those same people need encounters the encounter with the son of the living god this is doctrine if you do not have an encounter with the son of the living god you are in trouble why because no other encounter sustains the power to save you and translate you from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of god's dear son my brothers and my sisters no matter how long you fast no matter how long you pray no matter how many realms and dimensions you step into even if you go to heaven even if it's a true heaven and you come down if you don't have an encounter with the son of the living god you are going to hell it's as simple and honest as that are we learning the first foundational encounter that every believer must have encounter with the son of god number two very quickly the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the whole and the ministry of the holy spirit in that order second only to your encounter with the son of the living god you need an encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit please look up the ministry of the holy spirit is not for pastors the ministry of the holy spirit is not for preachers it's not just for some supernatural people the ministry of the holy spirit is for everybody jesus told us that he is the only shorty to have been guided he says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth satan can use truth to destroy it's not only a lie that destroys the truth can destroy too many believers have not been introduced into this encounter with the person of the holy spirit <laughs> an encounter with the holy spirit is more than praying in tongues no just because hands were laid on you and you are praying in tongues when we say have you met the holy ghost you say yes no 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 just because you have eaten someone's food does not mean you've met the person no you benefited from the person but have you met the person can i tell you this especially for those of us who are called into ministry all those who have been mightily used by god from scripture and modern history and even today will tell you they can trace their exploits to this one encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit we've dealt with that here so i don't want to go so deep into that the holy spirit realized the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is not an archangel. The Holy Spirit is not one of those winds flowing in the realm of the Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is God. You can encounter his office. When you are encountering the Son, he plays a role there. But you can en encounter the person of the Holy Spirit. It is true. The benefit of that encounter is guidance. I've taught you. 
the benefit of that encounter is empowerment direction the holy spirit so that whatever you see and whatever you hear you can trust him to guide you he will tell you what is from him and he will tell you what is not from him you do not use the purity of what you are seeing to know whether it's from god or not no it is the voice of the holy spirit that will help you decipher you will see many good things in your christian experience but they are not from god it's not in this kingdom is we don't deal with good or bad we deal with whether the holy spirit is involved or not no matter how good it is if the holy spirit who is the spirit of the father is not involved in that process stay away no matter how good encounter with the person and the ministry of the holy spirit koinonia is god helping you tonight so there are times while i'm having several visions maybe in the miracle service and all of that you see it happen i can have the vision say of a coffin and i can see death now i don't just announce the holy spirit listen all of those visions will pass through the sieve of these foundational visions these foundational encounters are we together now any vision i see that does not glorify the sun i will never announce it i will throw it like that the same way you are passing the street and you see a madman you just know that somebody was there and you passed you are focusing on what you are looking at there are many other things you will see other than what god wants you to see but you must first ask yourself a question this is why i'm teaching you this because i have had this encounter with the son of god every other encounter i have i must ask myself does this encounter reveal jesus and does this bring him glory either in my life or the life of those i'm about to minister to if it does not capture the revelation of the son and the glorification of the same no matter how spectacular the vision is i will dump it is someone learning now an encounter with the son gives balance to every other encounter you have if it does not reveal the son and does not bring him glory throw it out of your life number two an encounter with the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you direction the holy spirit gives you guidance let me tell you this i wish we had the time i hope you know that in your christian experience you will get to a point where you will meet a lot of people with influences that produce results but if you have a rich ministry with the holy spirit you will be able to know that this is not the holy spirit and you may even be able to help them listen in my life and in ministry i've had the opportunity of praying for people especially kids kids that they brought that were demonstrating superhuman abilities it was because of this relationship with the holy spirit are we together remember in the book of acts the experience of paul remember the little girl who was using divination many of us now would have entered partnership with her in ministry many of us you can't allow that opportunity to pass you by like that that is a rich opportunity for strategic alliance she even volunteered this is a great man i mean what else would you for someone to announce you using her credibility but he looked and looked and said no something is wrong the holy spirit i have met people in my life this is a true story i have met people in my life who called my name and prophesied to me and they were not christians they've not given their life to christ not it's not something hidden i remember one time i think it was niger i was going to have a meeting i think it was niger republic or so and we were going we went we flew to lagos and then went by road somewhere when we were doing just the immigration formalities i remember some of you go to the market and you see these people they are there they can call your name with uncanny accuracy if you do not have an encounter with the holy spirit your search for visionary solutions will lead you to delusion Joshua Selman ah who are you well I'm not exactly an evil person but I'm not by 
everybody's visionary experience is powered from a source what source powers that vision it is not the correctness of the information is the source that powers it and listen you have no right to just look at people and begin to judge them if your own relationship with the holy spirit is not alive by what parameter you will become judgmental and you will mix both good and bad and call everybody fake it is on the strength of your relationship with the holy spirit you can decipher Are we learning now yes sir there are times that i've shaken hands with people and i look at them sincerely and you see them manifesting a semblance of the anointing and i know this is not god sometimes i make one statement and they are delivered there and they themselves will be surprised i know a woman one time that i prayed for this woman would have visionary encounters people would come to her house she can pray for you she said she had testimonies of people who were buried who god opened their wombs but she knew something was wrong because when she lies to sleep she will be tormented by evil spirits yet this gift supposedly was working in her life the day i met her she came thank god she was a sincere woman she was honest and she told me she said this is a gift that has been working in her life people have sowed into her life she's had results but i knew this was not the spirit now it didn't mean the woman was bad i have a relationship with the holy ghost i know how he operates i know what is not him and i held the woman's hands and i prayed for her why did they flog the apostles in the bible because they tampered with somebody's way of getting money there were some evil men who saw that young girl and when they saw her instead of them to lead her to someone who will help her they decided to cash in on the opportunity while those demons continue to torment that girl i love the apostles when they came they didn't have time for rubbish they rebuked that spirit even though they flogged them later on but at least jesus was glorified are we together encounter with the holy spirit listen to me until you cultivate your relationship with the holy spirit you will never step into the realm of discernment and sensitivity and in this end time brothers and sisters you need sensitivity there are many things that look like god that is not god there are many things that look like god speaking to your destiny i can prophesy favor upon you now and say in the name of Jesus Christ be favored you will say amen the moment you say amen you will see a text in your phone after service and it's 419 people they will tell you give us your account number give us something and um, um, there is some money that you want somewhere you have you seen those kinds of people and the devil will now connect it to the prophetic word of favor and that begins your destruction for instance but when you know the holy ghost you know how he operates you know that this is not god and you dump that nonsense out of your phone and give yourself rest there are times you sit down and you are doing you are talking with people you are about to do a business with them they are so articulate they are intelligent everything is right but here comes the holy ghost again it tells you no no i know i told you that i will bless you next week but this is not it the blessing is coming but this is not it and there are times that many things will not look like it but it is it it is still him that will tell you you see that is the strange thing with the holy spirit you will see a job that does not look like it and the holy ghost will tell you take that job Fifty thousand. when i am waiting for one that will give me 250 and the holy ghost will tell you take it but this does not look like the vision i saw because you have an encounter with the holy ghost he will say take it whilst you are in that job your uncle will come and it is through that job you'll be sent for a training and you will meet your destiny helper and within five months you will leave that job into where god showed you now had you not heard god you will not even know how to navigate to that realm are we learning now number three very quickly encounter with the word of god it would never tire me to teach you this you have to learn it the third foundational encounter you must have superior to all other encounters is an encounter with the word of god please look at me if you are not sound in scripture you see deception will be 
the devil will take you for a ride you have to be sound in scripture encounter with the word of god what is the word of god the word of god is a compendium of the mysteries of the kingdom god's modus operandi the word of god reveals number one god's character number two the word of god reveals how god operates when you encounter the word of god you know how god operates and you know how he does not operate there is a way the god of the bible never operates never operates never operates most believers are not sound in scripture that's why it's easy to fall into the trap of deception the devil comes and markets all kinds of lies and just sways us like that listen in this end time we need high level illumination knowledge of god's word to know what to do there are people who have no business relocating abroad but because they do not understand the character of scripture someone just tells you i want to lift you you have to go back to that encounter how does god lift the things that are written aforetime, the bible says they are for our learning so that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope many things that we have called greener pastures are not greener pastures greener pastures is the word of god you see that i'm not saying there's anything wrong having all these experiences but the word of god must be your guide can i tell you this as powerful as supernatural encounters are if you start ministry just because you saw a vision you will suffer as if it's not god that called you there are people today who are frustrated and sometimes sincere people when they come they say apostle i can't understand they will show me a documentation of their vision and i know truly that vision came from god but it is the principle of scripture that controls your success the visions are only support systems to help guide your conviction when jesus came and walked upon the earth is it not heaven that he came from why did he need to learn scripture why would you come from heaven through the womb of a woman and submit yourself to the learning of scripture from heaven jesus did not come from the realm of the spirit he came directly from heaven not even heaven from the throne he came to the earth and submitted himself to this encounter so when satan came he didn't say satan you are stupid you forgot i am god he said it is written he had a right to say i hope you know i am god satan i know this is you my discernment is still in place the holy ghost is in me leave this place no he wanted us to learn so he said it is written for every temptation the devil brought jesus did not use his encounters for defense he used scriptures it is written you don't tell the devil you are joking god called me that is nonsense the realm of the spirit does not care what has the bible said as your system of defense i can never fail why i know what i saw you are the only one who saw it the realm of the spirit is asking you why should we stop oppressing you i saw a vision in that vision i saw a plant and it was bringing oranges that's a vision my brothers and my sisters what will give you fruitfulness is it is written i had many visions about koinonia in abuja i would have been surprised and shocked disappointed and frustrated if it was the only thing if i place my vision on a billboard with my name written hello abuja i am joshua selman it happened on a thursday night when i was sleeping i saw the heavens open and i saw the map of abuja <laughs> you just laugh and say all these stupid people listen to me this ministry thrives not just because of visions the visions benefit us and add to our convictions but everything works because it is written one more time shout it say it is written one more time say it that means anything you tell me that is not consistent with what is written i can change it because this foundational encounter is greater than any other encounter a genuine man of god even if it's me 
I can look at you and say that based on the vision I'm seeing, I saw an obituary. This is the reason why you see many times when I prophesy to people, I tell them what I saw, but I'm quick to tell them, no, 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 I'm not a prophet of doom. We have this encounter also. We have the power based on what is written to veto whatever it is that we have seen. This is what brings perspective to the, orchest the operation of the prophetic. Imagine that you come and I leave you, I say, ah, you came for koinonia i don't know what brought you here today because with what i'm seeing i saw a coffin may god show you mercy no i didn't i didn't know koinonia why do you think you are going to succeed in life why do you think you will see the end of this year listen 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 why do you think the dream you saw you saw them dragging your trouser and your primary school in that dream. Why do you think you will still succeed in spite of it? Listen to me. It was written so that it cannot be changed. I believe this. No matter what my eye sees, no matter what my ears hear, no matter what encounters I have, I only believe those encounters if I find them consistent with what is written. If that encounter is not consistent with what is written, I use what is written to change that encounter. Listen. This looks like I'm just joking with you. If you don't learn this, you will live a defeated Christian life. Having visions and you'll never succeed. This is the reason why many people have notebooks full of visions. And there is no, there is no progress in their lives. Because they ignore this. They throw it away. And they begin to move according to what I saw. I saw, um, what's today's date? I saw 15th of August. And then I saw dollars. That's a vision. That will not give you favor. It may be that God is telling you through that similitude that I want to bless you. But whether it will happen or not depends on it is written. What you do with that vision is you now open your scripture. And you now find scriptures that are consistent with that vision. That vision now supports your confidence. But the real producer of the results is not what you saw. Is It is written. One more time shout it. It is If I didn't believe this, I would have died since. Since I would have died since. You don't know the kinds of visions. You know, as a man of God, people send you all kinds of things. I've had well-meaning people send me text messages. Apostle, be careful. I saw a ghastly motor accident. And they are not wrong. Some of them are accurate prophets of God. I'm not, this is not sarcasm. Sincere people. And I know that was the plan of the devil. So when you wake up in the morning and you have a dream don't wait for miracle service no open your bible and let it is written collide with that vision listen what i'm teaching you will give you confidence so that you are not you, you don't you don't become a victim it's good to be blessed by men of God, but be careful so that we don't turn you into spiritual slaves. We are supposed to help you, not trap you. This is it. You need this more than Joshua Selman. Can I tell you, if you pay attention to this even more than Joshua Selman, you will succeed. This predates my arrival here. Many have come and gone. This remains written. Many have said many things and have had to cancel it. Many people have made prophetic statements and how to honorably withdraw it. But this has not been changed. Third foundational encounter. Encounter with the word of God. It's an indoctrination. 
this is the reason why my spiritual experiences profit me and they profit the body because i will never exalt any vision i see no matter how many days fasting no matter what it is if a demon spirit appears to me right now the first thing is i'm going to why is it there you see if it's there to oppress me it is written can take care of it if God is trying to send a message to me for the body of Christ I would discern the message when I'm done the demon will go but your confidence is it is written yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why because thou art with me listen thy rod and thy staff that's what comforts me thy rod and thy staff thy rod and thy staff so i want you to if you don't know what is written it means you are in trouble imagine if jesus did not know what was written and satan says turn this stone into bread he says don't disturb me i am jesus you'll be surprised satan will still be standing there that's why he has not left your life because when you came to him he said i'm a member of koinonia he said nonsense what is that what is you a member of koinonia before you were born i knew about koinonia i was in heaven what is the basis why should i leave you <sighs> okay what else do i say now listen why should you rise in life apostle declared over me you are joking apostle declared according to what I prophesied but I did as I was commanded I didn't prophesy as I wanted John said I am the voice it is not the voice that brings the power it is the word that the voice is echoing are we together now please learn what I'm telling you some of you by this there are papers you need to go back home and tear into pieces and sit with confidence and sleep like a baby and wake up it is written Halibakaroski Atabata. it is written my 2021 is blessed it is written it is written it is written it is written why do you think you'll be exempted from all the limitations that come ah, i am a member of koinonia that that is wonderful when you understand it to be that i am prophetically connected based on what the bible says but if it's just blindly i'm a member of koinonia you will you will be surprised i'm saying this because there are many believers who do not have a scriptural basis for confidence satan leave me alone why I know apostle joshua selman and the demon will say jesus i know me too i know jesus me too i know paul me too i know joshua selman you have to stand and say you better know me too it is written register it in the realm of the spirit that it is written this is why i know that i will never fail in life thank god for the many visions that i have but depending on those visions for success is deception. The visions are only guides. They are support systems. I tell you the truth by the God of heaven. The basis for the victory of my life. The basis for the victory of this ministry. Is this immutable counsel of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. So when I tell you, you will rise, say amen, but don't just go back and say I will rise. No. When I say you will rise, quickly resort to this foundational encounter. Find the scriptures that support what I said. Then you will rise indeed. But if you just believe that just because I spoke to you, no. Are you seeing the balance now? this is why many of you do not profit from the prophetic ministry the prophetic ministry is not fake it is a genuine spiritual ministry but just because an anointed man spoke over your life just because he revealed and what he revealed was true when he blessed you your spiritual life went down because you had confidence that this man knows god his word does not fail but you ignored it is written
it is written it is written when men say there is a casting down for me i will say there is a lifting up so based on that when i say in the name of jesus you are exempted from evil as you are saying amen your mentality is connecting that amen with this that's what plugs it into the power line to produce result anything i tell you don't just say amen connect it to a scripture then you can now say amen are we together now when you wake up from a dream and you see me blessing you and praying for you don't just dance that you saw me find a scripture when you connect it to that vision you have given it life to manifest anything not connected to scripture does not have the life that brings manifestation you can have an encounter be in the realm of the spirit watch promotion and you return back and it will never manifest in this realm but when you connect that vision to it is written some of you is a few days after now you will really get all that i've taught you maybe i will just stop at this third encounter so anything i see i pass it through the encounter with the sun does it pass the test i pass it through the encounter with the holy ghost does it pass the test then i pass it through the encounter with scripture if it passes the test then i receive it if it fails that test no matter how accurate it is i dump it in peace and i don't feel bad If you tell me apostle your life will be destroyed for instance i salute what you are saying but i go to it is written until i find the same thing you said here there is no reason for tears weep not for the book is opened you only weep when the book is closed hear me there are arrows that fly by day you don't need a prophet to tell you that there are noisome pestilences there are destructions that waste in the noonday so if someone tells you he's not telling you anything new are we together now he's only revealing to you something that the bible already says what today will someone tell you that the bible has not told you generally speaking if someone tells you there is evil on earth in all honesty is that new it is written already told you if someone to tells you there is a possibility for failure is that new no the bible already tells you most of the things we seek for in encounters scripture has already told us i want to succeed okay so how do you succeed if only i can see joshua selman i know my life will change you are right because of the prophetic dimension as written in scripture however you can sit with scripture this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do to do to do to do not just to read to do so it may be the doing part you are missing man of god what gives you confidence that you will thrive in ministry i know my mentor i know my father think again i know the spiritual tribe i'm connected to think again hmm. what makes you believe you will prosper i got a first class and then somebody prophesied to me and said i will never fail think again an encounter with the son of the living god you see because we have ignored these encounters many people keep meeting the apostolic and the prophetic ministry but they are never saved do you know that do you know that you can be in church for a long time you can even be part of the eldership and you have not met the son like it's happened to many people i'm not preaching from a standpoint of sarcasm this preaching tonight is coming from a heart that desperately loves the body of christ and god's people generally speaking these were the things that the lord taught me that have given me stability in my life today more than my visions listen if i come for miracle service today 
and I never see anything I never hear anything I can pick my Bible and read for you a scripture about healing and say the sick begin to be healed based on it is written don't tie yourself to just vi listen visionary experiences and all these supernatural encounters only become useful if they submit to these foundational encounters if you're a man of God here learn it and put balance to your administration of encounters people may clap for you while you are announcing visionary encounters but sooner or later you'll find out that there is no growth because it is not the encounters create convictions but their convictions are only strengthened by these foundational encounters when I learned this I found rest I travel for meetings and people expect to see the power of God people expect to see the grace of God and you would ask me apostle what makes you think that people are going to be blessed I will be stupid to tell you I hope you know that this is an apostolic call I hope you know that there are visionary experiences I will be surprised that I will stand and the heavens will be closed the basis of my confidence is it is written what was written the Lord walking with them confirming the words so every time I walk I do not walk alone you invite me but it's not only me that came I came with a battalion so when I came here and I began to speak and you saw the power of God manifest it's not just listen it's not just because I am anointed it's not just because I saw it's not just because something was told my ears more than those encounters I know that what I saw submitted to the truth of scripture it is consistent with the character of the son consistent with the ministry of the Holy Spirit consistent with the character of scripture and I know that God will honor it let me tell you this you walk in this you have received the vaccination for error now God can trust you with visions over nations and you know how to administer the prophetic with accuracy why because you know how to pass it through it is written apostle jesus prophet jesus look at the respect he had for scripture every time they asked jesus a question he seldom spoke about his encounters it is written there are few times you will see jesus talking about his encounters yet he was the fountain of all encounters it is written it is written they say this in your law but this is what i say they say this but this is what i say his first sermon was not encounters his first sermon was the spirit of the lord is upon me because it was written by the prophets because he hath anointed me when he was done he now said this scripture has been fulfilled this day let me prove to you that what is written is now manifest man with the withered hand stretch your hands now if you call him a fake man of God he will refer you to it is written let me teach you something before we pray if you're a man of God here if you know that God has granted you grace for extraordinary manifestations of the Spirit don't take for granted that the people who you are ministering to understand what you are saying show them the scriptural basis of that operation before you begin it or at least before the end of that operation you see me do it most times because if you do not see it from a scriptural standpoint the devil may deceive you into thinking this is just superstition Are we blessed I have taught you an encounter with the spirit of wisdom with favor my life today is full of convictions I don't teach things I don't believe I don't teach things I'm not confident on but my greatest encounters brothers and sisters hear me my greatest encounters are not my encounters of Jesus as wonderful as they are my greatest encounters are not the encounters where I saw a crowd of a, a crowd of people it's not an encounter with all of these saints of old I only say those things sometimes to encourage you the foundational encounters in my life that I respect and I honor that have helped to shape this grace and have produced this that is a wonder and a blessing to the world today 
is not just that vision it's an encounter with the son of the living god his life that is at work in me an encounter with the office and the person of the holy spirit giving me direction helping me and guiding me part time investing the presence of god upon my life then an encounter with the word of god teaching me the character of the christ and the modus operandi of the kingdom the assignment of the anointing is to make sure the word of god does not look like a lie i've taught you this without the, an encounter with the word of god you don't need anointing you cannot truly operate the anointing in isolation it will mislead people the assignment of the anointing is to validate what was said so if nothing has been said the anointing has no ministry understand this if the lord says let the sick be healed and i declare it as his servant the anointing moves to validate that claim apostle i want to be anointed see how jesus anointed people in the bible he spent time teaching them doctrine he taught them scripture and then one encounter they had now they had the grace to validate these things many of you if i drop a bible here and i drop a bottle of oil you would jump at the bottle of oil even if it breaks on your head you will still be laughing with the injury on your head because you believe you encountered the anointing please return back to the place of scripture sit down with your bible start reading it like you did before i've hardly seen anybody bring me a bible and say pray on it i'm not saying there's anything wrong please don't you if you have your bottle of oil said no problem i'm going to pray on it but i'm saying we have to be careful i've not seen anybody buy a clean king james bible and say apostle please pray on it that god will open me up to the mysteries of the kingdom no but people have brought all kinds of things people have brought sticks people have brought uh, uh, water people have brought handkerchiefs um, they are sincere people i'm not saying they are wrong people have brought sand people have brought shoes people have bought photos people have brought food people have brought all kinds of things where is the bible here it's not necessary i just need a prophetic action immediately apostle i had a dream in that dream i saw myself coming with oil and now i have come with it physically i agree and i'm going to pray for you don't feel bad i'm not being sarcastic okay so what makes you think that this oil is going to work because you will anoint it no 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 the oil is not anointed because i lay hands on it the oil is anointed because i lay hands on it with the understanding that the empowerment comes from scripture so where you keep your anointing oil where you kept your sand where you kept your your candle or whatever just push it and put a bible there don't ignore those things put a bible first most believers would prefer to buy jars of oil jars of handkerchiefs and if you tell them okay what are you going through things are not working in my life listen to this message and then when you listen to this message get this scripture you see them smile at you and live with disappointment as though god punished you i came and i stood here this is what you are doing because god anointed you but the moment you come and you say kneel down turn stand up ah what is this they now begin to say something is going on ah goodness so my my case listen i'm not mocking the prophetic i'm only giving you wisdom there are times that i've prayed for people and i said it's done they didn't believe it they stood there Abba, it's done with what i saw i saw these guys rolling up and down and you just touch me and say you are distracted just focus on me and pray for me with all your heart may god give us growth and maturity in the name of jesus christ we're going to pray i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord now listen two disclaimers one you must be wise in communicating what you have heard tonight don't go around tearing down people 
don't go around insulting prophets and apostles i have a responsibility to tell you this because there are many believers who have not understood what i've said but they know how to use it and tear other people they are not going to listen to me all the while while i was talking they were not paying attention and yet they will go and say aha this is what apostle was saying no no i have a responsibility to teach you truth as instructed by god but if and when I do communicate something that looks like I'm lashing out on people, you must understand that it's, number one is coming from a standpoint of love and it's coming to a people who should be matured based on scripture. Are we together now? So some of you, maybe you have, maybe your church or your pastor, you find them operating in the prophetic and they may even make some of these mistakes. Don't point hands at people. You remember that the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge, it is love. If God grants you the grace and you can explain and expound scripture more perfectly, that's fine. Otherwise, stay in the place of prayer and communicate love. Do not carry revelation like a sword and go and begin to tear people and cause injury in the body of Christ. It is not maturity. I have to put this disclaimer. Are we blessed? Let's pray now. Now that you have learned this, I can release the grace for encounters upon you. And I know that I did not make a mistake because now you know how to decipher encounters. You will be surprised that after this prayer, as I speak over your life, many of you will step into strange dimensions of the prophetic and visionary encounters, but they would not mislead you and they will not mislead others because you have been taught the foundational encounters that every other encounter must rest upon please lift your voice in one minute and give god thanks for the word tonight father we bless you and we give you praise the mystery of supernatural encounters we bless you we honor you 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 in the name of jesus the entrance of your word gives light it gives understanding unto the simple we bless you for the power of your word for giving us understanding we open up ourselves to supernatural encounters knowing we are safe we have been pegged by these foundational encounters they become our boundary of safety and we will never walk in error because we have encounters with the son of the living god we have encounters with the spirit of the living God. We have encounters with the word of God. The modus operandi of the kingdom. Lift your voice and thank the Lord. No fear, no fear, no fear, no intimidation. Because these three encounters are for all. Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, find comfort. If you have not yet been open to the realms of visions, visionary encounters do not stand and feel bad don't let some of us that god has helped in that area intimidate you and do not use those visionary encounters as a measure sorry about that a measure of spiritual maturity are we together now no don't sit down and allow yourself to be misled that until i have these supernatural encounters i am not growing if you encounter the sun you encounter the spirit you encounter the word keep moving you will move enviably to the place of destiny every other encounter that comes is only a supporting structure but i tell you you have gotten it right if you get the sun right you have gotten it you get the spirit right you have gotten it you get the word of god right you have gotten it now let me pray for you father in the name of jesus my first prayer for everyone is that these foundational encounters will become true in our lives in Jesus name for anyone here who is born again you already have an encounter with the Son but I pray for you that the ministry of the Holy Spirit will become real for you I also pray for you that the ministry of the word especially because for many of us this is the area we have defaulted we love superstition africa loves superstition we love a lot of superstitious things but i pray for you the grace to settle with scripture till you have illumination understanding and confidence receive that grace in jesus name 
the grace to believe to respect and to exalt what is written above what you see above what you hear receive that grace in jesus name and now i pray for you to support all of these foundational encounters may god open you strangely to the realm of the angelic may god open you strangely to the realm of visions may god open you strangely to the realm of trances and dreams in the name of jesus christ god will reveal things to you through those platforms and then in partnership with these foundational encounters you will produce an excelling christian life in the name of jesus christ hear me for anyone here who has had anything or seen anything in form of vision that negates what is written concerning you i use the authority of scripture and i cancel that vision from your life in the name of jesus christ no matter what you have seen no matter what you have heard if it's not consistent with what is written in the name of jesus in partnership with the spirit of god we declare it null and void and for every vision you have seen every vision you have heard every accurate vision that came from the holy spirit that came from heaven and is yet to be manifest i connect it to what is written i give it the life that makes it manifest in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice who is in error and has become an addict of visions an addict of the prophetic an addict of the apostolic above scripture i declare let there be deliverance for you now anyone who will have to depend on the prophetic or depend on visions for your confidence in the name of jesus i rearrange the basis of your confidence let the basis of your confidence not just be visionary experiences but let it be these tripartite foundational encounters in the name of jesus christ hear me any pronouncement over your life whether through a dream through a vision or even through a man of god that is not consistent with scripture i stand by the ministry of the holy spirit and by that which is written i change it now concerning your life dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye